Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Committee on, uh, on uh, Justice and uh, on this uh, very, very important hearing that has uh, gotten everybody interested uh, suddenly in the welfare of children. Uh, I will have uh, the uh, attorney Jose Marco, Marcos A. Babia uh, read the list of the resource persons so that we can proceed properly. In the meantime, I'd like to welcome uh, Senator Francis Pangilinan. Uh, and uh, go ahead. Okay, for our resource persons for today, from the national government, we have Secretary Eduardo M. Año. Department of Interior and Local Government. Secretary Minardo Guevara, represented by ASEC, George Orta II. Oh, uh, where is uh, ASEC? Oh, yeah, okay. From DSWD, represented by USEC, I mean, Tore Franca Neri. Yes. The Deped Service, represented by USEC, Josephine Maribojo, Undersecretary for Legal Affairs. Josephine, can you raise your hand so that I will not have a hard time? I am trying to place it. It's very hard because we're all separated, no? Uh, Josephine Maribo. Maribo. Sounds like you own the, the town of Maribo in Bohol. Are you from Bohol? Uh, no, Your Honor, I'm just from Bohol. I'm from Bohol. I'm from Bohol. I'm from my ancestors, Your Honor. Okay, I'm your ancestors. Go ahead. Uh, we have the Chief PNP, Police Director General Oscar D. Albayalde. Okay. With him, Police Director Elmo Francis O. Sarona, Directorate for Investigation, Detective Management. Thank you. Good. From the BGMP, Director Dio Gracia Stapayan. Yes. Pideya, Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, is represented by Attorney Roel Lasala. Roel Lasala. Okay, thank you. Commissioner, Commissioner Gascon is represented by Commissioner Gwendolyn Pimentel Gana and Commissioner Leia Armamento. Gwendolyn Pimentel and Gana and Leia Armamento. Commissioner Leia Armamento. Leia? Where's Leia? Yes, hi. Are you, are you armed? No, 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 you're not. Okay, go ahead. Napol Comser, represented by Attorney Rogelio P. Casura, Vice Chairman and Executive Officer. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Attorney Chito Noel de Bas Bustonera, Acting Staff Service Chief, Legal Affairs Service. Number. Bustonera? Or Bustonera? How do you pronounce it? Bustonera. Mr. Chairman, good morning. Bu Bustonera. Po. Bustonera. I don't know how Bustonera. Okay. Good. Good. From Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council, the Executive Director, Attorney Trisha Claire A. Oco. Yes. Thank you. Art from Artisi Manila, we have Judge Marianne P. M. Zurek. And from Where is Artis Justice, uh, where's the judge? Yeah. Is there, ah, yeah, judge, thank you. Maria, thank you, Judge Maria. From Valenzuela, Valenzuela RTC 171, Executive Judge Marianena Santos. Okay, thank you. Can you speak a little slower and clearly? Yes, thank sir. you. From our local government, we have Attorney Sal Neil Salceda, Attorney for Neil City Legal Office. Mr. Salceda. And Babian, okay. Miss Miss Milagros, D.I.L.G. No, okay. Else, Miss Milagros is Rio Sora, the Social Welfare Officer Five, Manila, D.S.W. Uh, Rio Sora. Rio Sora, okay. Sir Mayor Oreta is represented by Attorney Voltaire De La Cruz, the City Administrator. Oreta. Mayor Reta, sir, represented by Tony Voltaire. Ah, Malabon. You're here, Mayor. Thank you. I'm sorry. City Administrator, sir. City Administrator. City Administrator. You know, Mr. Mayor, but you okay. So, 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 so. And also, Miss Patria Agawili, the OIC City Social Welfare Development of Valenzuela. Yeah, try not to eat your words. This is your three minutes of fame. You're on national television. Go ahead. From Speak louder and firmly and with authority. From the second district of Quezon City, sir, we have Councillor Ranulfo Z. Ludovica. Yes. 
Yes, go ahead. With him, sir, is the legal, legal president of Quezon City, Councilor Alfredo Rojas. Thank you. Go ahead, Fred. Thank you. And the OIC, Valenzuela City, Social Welfare and Development, Miss Dorothy Evangelista. Yes, you'll see. Dorothy. And from Valenzuela also, sir, the head of Bahay Pagasa, Miss Lourdes Garduse. Yeah, if I get somebody from Bahay Pagasa here. From the civil society organization, non government organization, sir, we have the vice president of Manila Cluster of the Philippine Association of Social Work Workers. King, Mr. Cleo Angelo Guevara. Cleo. Okay, pass with. Okay, and the head policy unit of the Council for Welfare of Children, Miss Normina G. Moiga. Normina Moiga. From the Psychological Association of the Philippines, the represented by trustee of PAC, Dr. Lian Alampay. Didian Alampay, yes. And the Child Protection Unit, UPPJ, Child Rights Network, represented by Dr. Bernadette Madrid. Yes. And from the... Hello, I'm Barcelona. Okay, go ahead. From Philippine Action for Youth Offenders, the President, the President, the President, Attorney Romel Alim Abitria. Ruben. Romel. Romel. Abitria. Okay. From Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council, Executive Director, Attorney Trisha Clare, A. Oco. Huh? Sinabi mo siya. Normal mo na yan, ah. Sorry. Normal mo siya, Oco, ah. From UNICEF, Country Representative, Ms. Lota Silvander. Lota Silvander. Silvander. UNICEF, welcome. Atene Human Rights, Attorney Ray Paolo Santiago. Welcome back, Paul. From Department of Psychology at Ateneo Human Rights Center, Professor Lian Peña Alampay. Well, na bagit na yan. Doble. Doble, sir. Are you, from are you in your lucid interval today? <laughs> yes, okay, I am sir. From Bahay Tulayan, Chef Director, Ms. Lily Flor de Lis. Lily? Lily Flor de Lis. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to say relax because it's like a tennis court. You know, it's like a billiard game. I have to go here, then the corner, then there. Go ahead. Yeah. With her, sir, is Miss Donita Ruiz, a former child at risk. Donita Ruiz, a former child, child at risk. Okay. And pediatrician from PJHLPU, Dr. Emma Lianto. Emma and Lianto. And from Child Protection Advisor, Save the Children, Miss Wilma Banyaga. Yes, Wilma. Welcome back. That's all, sir. Okay. Did we miss anybody? Anybody there who wanted to testify in the back? Okay. So welcome. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Jose Marcos Babia. So today, uh, the issue that we're going to hear today, and I'm calling it to order now, uh, is uh, really very, very old and very new. The article on uh, the nine-year-old uh, child having criminal liability started in the revised penal code in article uh, in the uh, as early as 1932, and then uh, in 19 in 2086, uh, Senator Pangilinan amended the law and made that 15-year-old, uh, no? 2006. So I don't know how. Amended, is, I was about to say that. Thank you very much. Uh, amended in 2013, and we have had a slew of uh, uh, laws, uh, such as the Ju Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act. Uh, this is what I just talked about, RA 10630, uh, October 2013. And then, I think you can see it there also. I will try to make it uh, easy for everybody. But, you know, there's also a slew of other laws, particularly our Constitution, uh, that provides uh, the state recognized the vital role of the youth in nation building and shall promote and protect their physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual, and social well-being. Big words. I've heard that since uh, law school, uh, way back under the old Constitution, 1935, 1987, which we, we have cracked, 1971 Constitution, which I have cracked, and now here. 
Palagi and the child, the importance of the child, the vital role of the youth in nation building. And then we have other laws. Uh, if you continue the, pres uh, the presentation, uh, the child and youth drug were called in December 10, 1974. Uh, so even under martial law, PD 603, uh, again, it speaks about the declaration of policy. The child is one of the most important assets. In fact, I corrected that earlier. I said it is the most important asset of the nation. Child is the most important asset of the nation. Every effort should be exerted to promote his welfare and enhance his opportunities for a useful, and I quote, useful and happy life. I wish that was true. Anyway, uh, a child is not a mere creature of the state. Hence, his individual traits and aptitude should be cultivated to the utmost insofar as they do not conflict with the general welfare. Now, having said that, uh, we also have other provisions, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that have been covered, such as uh, the uh, provisions on making sure that when they're incarcerated, you have Baha'i Pagasa, uh, you have also the child abuse uh, law, trapping of, uh, of children, there's a slew of laws. All this uh, claim to protect the children, the Filipino child. But in reality, I think they fall short uh, in terms of actually making it happen. Uh, for that matter, uh, let me just point out, I'm just giving an overview of the situation. Because we tend to focus on the criminal liability uh, of the child. And... Uh, uh, that's all well, well and good, but I think we should also focus on the reality that uh, the state promises a lot. So that I would say our main liability is the state, not the child. I'm sure I, I see some people bowing their heads. You all have good judgment. All right. And having said that, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I was really, I had my staff read to me some of the salient features of uh, the under Article 59, yeah, and we go now to the family. Criminal liabilities are attached to any parent who conceals or abandons a child with intent to make such child lose his civil status. I do, I'm, I'm tempted again to ask the judges here, and thank you for coming, because that is part of the reality. Abandons the child under such circumstances as to be deprive him of the love, care, and protection he needs. Boy, do I know that. My mother raised several hundred children in my lifetime, maybe even a thousand. Uh, I have foster sisters, uh, semi-adopted because we did have an adopted one, but some of them are nurses, some of them are uh, pastors already. And my mother, really, every time I came home uh, and I lay on my bed uh, when I come from uh, school or from work, there would be somebody like Goldilocks lying on my bed. And one of them came, and uh, I felt my pillow, and it was wet. And so I told my mother the next morning breakfast when I arrived from Procter & Gamble. I said, who is this child who is there? I don't know him. He just came in, and I saw him in He was moving around. And I said, does he have a name? He doesn't talk. So may I call him something? Yes. I mean, what do you want to call him? I think we should call him Luigi. I said, why Luigi? Basayin ko na ko, may tumutulo sa tenga. You know, Luca. <laughs> so we did call him Luigi. Uh, but he was really, really abandoned. The Lagan Gitanga doesn't talk, very hard to teach him. So we, I think I can, I can relate to what everybody's talking about. And I really complain when I see now it's all verba, very limited acta. I always say, acta non verba, action, not words. And we're very fond of that. Now, una yung salita sa goa. Neglects the child, or sells or abandons the child to another person for valuable consideration. Boy, I know this. I come from a city that had Americans at the time, and there were a lot of that going on. Neglects the child by not giving him the education which the family station in life and financial condition permit. I've seen many cases where practically uh, who was it who was telling me yesterday? Uh, somebody was stealing from the a senator was telling me. And when they caught him, they said, Sino ang ba't ka nagnanako? Sabi ko ng tatay ko, nasa labas, magnakawa ko para kumain kami. 
fails or refuses without justifying grounds to enroll the child as required by Article 72. Causes a base or permits the truancy of the child from the school where he is enrolled. Truancy, as here used, means absence without cause for more than 20 school days, not necessarily consecutive. It shall be the duty of the teacher in charge to report to the parents the absence of the child the moment these exceed five school days. Seven, improperly exploits the child by using him directly or indirectly, such as for purposes for begging. Don't we see that every day? Uh, and other acts which are inimical to his interest and welfare. Eight, inflicts cruel and unusual punishment upon the child or deliberately subjects him to indignation, indign 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 I think this should be indignities, and other excessive chastisement that embarrass or humiliate him. Causes or encourages the child to lead an immoral or dis dissolute life. When I was mayor, I told the story the other day of a child I saw and I arrested the mother. She was in a tube. She was about nine, ten years old. She was wearing clogs and she was running around nightclub row. And when I was mayor, we caught children being abused by a uh, pedophile from the U.S. Navy. And we chased him all the way to Philadelphia. And we got him back. We wanted him back to the Philippines. Unfortunately, a priest came in and started pedorating, so the Americans refused to bring him back. And I had to go to Guam to chase after him with the social welfare services and the city fiscal of Olongapo. So I think I know what I'm talking about when I've seen all these things happen. Uh, thank you. They want me to speak in Tagalog, but you know, I can speak in Tagalog. I can speak in Tagalog. I can speak in English. See, everybody tells me what to do. <laughs> Permits the child to possess uh, handle or carry a deadly weapon regardless of his ownership. I saw a lot of that when I was mayor. And also requires a child to drive without a license or with a license which the parent knows. I violated that. And my parents violated that. They allowed me to drive without a, without a license. And uh, to have been illegally procured with a motor vehicle driven by the child belongs to the parent. It shall be presumed that he permitted or ordered the child to drive it. Many of my classmates did the same thing. My point is all these are in the law. And yet when I ask uh, the judges the other day, five of them from the RTCs and from the family courts, I think they are, they were, uh, nobody has ever been uh, prosecuted, no parent, at least from their own experience. And I was just talking with the former chief justice and I said, have you heard of cases of uh, parents being prosecuted and uh, put to jail? I said, no. The child that uh, was wearing tube a true dress, cute little child, you know, probably a candidate for a pedophile. I was so upset, I took the parent and took her to jail, made extra uh, legal measures, and I told the child, I'll put your mother in jail and she will never go out because you're letting everybody down. And she started, and she started crying and then I said, don't you ever do that again. Don't ever even follow your mother if she's asking you to wear this dress, etc., etc. And of course, little by starting back, that was done. Uh, there are obviously all these things I saw the word truant. We don't, we hardly have any truant officer. Does anybody here know if we have truant officers still? When I was a kid, there were truant officers in public school. There are no truant officers. I thought we had free public education. And there are many kids on the streets. But I'm in a Glalakad Sakalian, I'm in a Glalakad Sakalian. I'm in a Glalakad Sakalian. I'm in a Glalakad Sakalian. I'm in a So, if you're a Glalakad Sakalian, you should have a truant officer. Now, Willie, some of the Bata, or I use the word Willie, you should have a Glalakad Bata, a Dadali Sakalian. You should have a Glalakad Sakalian. You should have a Glalakad Sakalian. Teachers na sa mga eskwela na pagka may problema yung bata, ba't hintayin pa natin magkaroon siya ng problema sa batas? Kung nakikita natin may problema yung bata sa eskwela, dapat alis to yung teacher. Of course, ang dami natin yung pinapasa sa teacher, hirap na hirap na yung mga teacher natin, yung mga guru natin. Pero, yan ang trabaho. Uh, we have to do what we have to do, and there should be no excuses, quite frankly. 
So there are many things that our government promises. Uh, when I look at the world, and a lot of people fancy the world, I look at UK and they have an age of 10 years old. I look at the America, it's not even clear whether they have any criminal liability, you know, standard. I don't think they do, but I know 35 states don't. Uh, of course, the Nordic countries go up to 18, 15. They have less population and they have a lot of wealth. I agree with you that a child does not belong in prison. Let me put that right away on the forefront. A child has to be nurtured, a child has to be kept. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, again when I was mayor, again going back to my vast experience as a mayor, I, no, no vendor was allowed, no cigarette vendor, no flower vendor was allowed to bring their child on the streets. If they did, I would immediately pull their permits to get out. I mean, even vendors, street vendors are not allowed on the streets, so I allow them liberally so that they can make a living. That's illegal, but we allow them, but they were also re re requested and told to report crime, clean up the streets, and number one, do not bring your children on the streets. I'm not trying to establish my bona fides. I'm just trying to say, kung gusto, maraming paraan, kung ayaw, maraming dahilan. If people want to do this, kailangan kusang doob, marasakit at kapot. I'm not trying to lecture or hector. It's not my place. But I think when we put something in the law, all of us must conform with the law and try to make it happen. We can debate all we want. There was a 25-year-old kid, in, uh, kid, I say kid in quotation marks, Filipino-American, I think it was in Seattle. I saw it on TV two or three days ago. Namatay yung kanyang nanay, pumuntay mga polis. Sabi niya, may pumatay, may pumasok. Yung pala, siya ang pumatay. 25 years old in America, no excuse. Able to get an education, there should be no excuse. But here, there are many kids also, and uh, if I may, I don't know if they're ready. Do we have the, you uh, hamog? Uh, can you show it? I ask, I mean, I, I just want to show all sides, because I'm already in favor of no liability for children, really, but sometimes, uh, look at this uh, situation. I saw this this morning at Fargo, by the way, I did not sleep last night could not sleep because uh, this is really troubled me. Look at this. Children clambering on the streets. This is ABS-CBN, don't you have an And then they were all gang up and voila, you see who they were gang up. There you go, somebody had something already. All of them going out of the jeepney. And then another guy, another kid coming back. And finally somebody's being dragged out and voila. A very senior citizen was taken out, and they're trying to grab his possessions. They're rolling on the street. What do we do about this? Simple enough to say, arrest. Right? Correct? If a policeman was there, Colonel Albayal, Gajal Albayal, what would you do? Of course, I'll make a arrest, sir. You'll make an arrest right yes. away. Yes. You arrest all the children. Yes, of course. Now let's follow. Let's follow the process. When you arrest these children, what will you do with them? The regular policeman on the beat. You will bring them to the precinct, right? And from the precinct, what will happen? Supposedly, we process. And let's look at brute reality here, because we will find out what we lack. And my point is, what we lack, we must fill. Go ahead. Yes, we process them, sir. And after processing, uh, we uh, basically... When you say process, they will be recorded. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. okay. And then we call the parents, also the DSWD. And how will you call the parents? Uh, we, ask, we, ask the, we ask the children, sir, kung sin, um, uh, who their parents are. Tawagin niya yung bata, o siya nang nakatira. Kung malayo yun, magtatagal yung bata sa presinto. Tama po ba yun? Yes, sir. Kung papadala kayo ng polis sa bahay nila. Yes, sir. O tatawagin niya yung barangay captain na pinakamalapit. Yes, sir. Dali niya yung magulang dito. Tama po ba yan? Yes, sir. At kung magkamisan, kailan niyo bibigay yung, mga, yung bata? Bibigay niyo ba yung bata sa magulang o bibigay niyo sa DSWD? It depends on the offense, sir. Ah, depends, depends on, on the offense. offense? Yes. So, you have some leeway? Yes. 
So yung ganyang offense, ano tatawin nyo dyan? If uh, only a light, light offense, not serious, then we can turn it them over directly to their parents. The parents? Uh, to, yes. Uh, of course, uh, with uh, witness programming from the barangay officials also. And where? Uh, from the, uh, with the, uh, the presence of the barangay officials also. All right, okay. And then the parents take him home? Yes, sir. Of course, it is all love. Oh, yes, sir. And what happens afterwards? Do you see them again and again? Basically, yes, sir. I know, I was a mayor. The same people that we bring out, they will come back again, right? Yes. And why do you think that is so? Well, Lack of parental responsibility? No. That's probably your honor. Tinutulak ng magulang na, sige, kung may pera ka, wag magdala ka, hindi ko natatarayin kung saan galing yung pera. Tama po ba yan? Yes, probably. Would the psychiatrist agree with the situation right now? Ma'am, can you answer the, may you say it out loud? I'm, say, I'm stating the problem first before we go into the solution, if you don't mind. Yeah. <coughs> Majority of these children are dysfunctional yung family. Problema talaga yung pamilya nila. Dysfunctional families. Yes. Nice to hear that word. But yes. the reality is, what do we do about these dysfunctional families? Now, kung serious of offense, let us say, may sinabi sa akin si Senator Soto, isang araw, when we were at the refectory, sabi niya, ako, sasagutin ko yung mga sinasabi. Huwag daw paparusahan yung mga bata. Bakit? Sabi siya gano'n. Eh sabi nga, yung, yung hipag ko, may maid, mga pasok yung bata sa eskwela, 13 years old, babae. Nirape ng dalawang lalaki na kaklase, 13 years old. At ngayon, wala na yan doon sa kaso, dahil child offender, so to speak, Pumapasok yung dalawang lalaki sa eskwela, yung batang babae na 13 years old, hindi na pumapasok. So we lost that one, didn't we? Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I think that too is a problem of enforcement because the law is very clear. If a child is involved in serious offenses, mandatory con involuntary confinement is actually uh, uh, the remedy. And for those 13-year-olds who committed that offense, by enforcement of law, should be involuntarily confined for a period not more, not less than one year, uh, and can be extended by the courts if it is necessary. I, I'm just so that is a failure of enforcement. I, mean, yeah, I know, failure of enforcement. I'm just saying the problem. I'm, I'm not in the solution yet. I know. Depends on the young Albert. Depends on crime. Depends on they 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 play a little bit of God. Sometimes they're brought to court, right? Kung may nag-uutos sa court, nakita ng court, di ba, yung set of weapons, General Bayalde, nainis nga ako doon sa litrato eh, na yung naka-M16 yung mga bata na andun sa kalye. Right? I don't know, ba't tayo na, uh, ba't napayagad yung litrato gano'n? Talong-talo ang polis doon. E eh, yan, what will the policemen do pagka hinuli yung bata, nakasama ang 8 years old, nagtutulak ng drugs, yung iba gumagamit? Ano gagawin natin doon? May ginawa na kayo, ano ko, may sabihin niya lang. Uh, yes, sir. We arrest them together with the uh, the uh, adults that they are with. Yun sir, ang... Uh, Tinagal niya yung chief of police, di ba? Yung yes. uh, precinct doon, yes, sir. Ha? That's in the botas. Yes, Because sir. meron nangyayari doon sa kanila. But how yes, many sir. times are you able to do that? Only after the fact, right? Yes, sir. It's a very difficult battle, right? Every day. Correct? So, uh, not only will you need intelligence, not only will you need the cooperation of the barangays, uh, I have the barangays here, uh, uh, the legal president, Alfredo Rojas, and Rani Rodovico, who might ask to come here to tell us what is the reality on the ground. Pwede ba mag-comment kayo dyan? Maganda uh, maganda po. Uh, sure. Yes, sa actual, uh, sa ground po talaga, iba-iba po. Kami ho ay, uh, dati ho akong barangay captain for 11 years ng barangay Batasan Hills. Uh, alam po namin pag-implement ng Batas ngayon po. Counselor po ako at chairman ng uh, public safety and order na Quezon City. Pag-implement po kami ng Batas. At sa pag-implement po namin ng Batas, ay uh, talaga ho nga uh, nakikita namin na recidivist yung mga kabataan. Yung amin po nyo rescue araw-araw for the past three years sa mga kabataan, Uh, Nakaka-encounter po kami dahil po lahat ng rescue po namin, sinadya-subject po namin ng drug test. Uh, doon po nalalaman namin 
As much as early as six years old to nine years old, may napetest po kami positive siya sa shabu, positive siya sa marijuana, at uh, sa solvent, aminado siya dahil sa solvent po, hindi po kasi nadidetect. Na so, nung tinatanong na po namin ang mga kabataan pong ito, lagi po namin natutuklasan na ang magulang ang talaga pong uh, pabaya sa mga bata pong ito. Meron ba kayong kaso ipinalo na sa mga magulang niya? Meron po kami nga uh, ipapahil. Ang problema rin po kasi sa amin dito, sir, kami po sa barangay o sa city level, kailangan nyo namin na isang social worker, licensed social worker, okay. na dapat po mag-a-assist sa amin. Meron na kami nga uh, DSWD o SSDD na representative. Yan siya po nag-a-assist sa amin pero limited lang din po ang uh, social worker na na-assist. Halos wala. Halos wala po. Now, Mr. Uh, uh, General Bayalde, uh, doon ba sa, sa mga police department, maghihintay kayo, meron ba kayong holding room or holding center na hindi sasama yung mga bata sa mga naloloko at kung medyo napapagod yung mga police group, pinapasok sa, dito, sa mga kulungan yan. Alam ko yan, babawal yan. Nasa batas yan, bawal na bawal yan. Pero nangyayari, di ba? Yes, uh, Your Honor, we don't have uh, uh, specific detention cells, but we have in all the stations the women's and children's protection desks. Offices yes. So, uh, the ulan tayo ng social uh, uh, welfare uh, uh, officer? Yes, kulang po tayo sa social work, worker, licensed social worker po. At the same time, kulang din po sa facilities. Pagka meron na kami na, na i-interview na kami, pati ang magulang, pag pinatawag namin, tinis na yung magulang, positive din sa drugs, nanay at tatay, positive sa drugs. At the same time, yung mga magulang yan, binipisyaryo pa ng DSWD natin, yung four piece, na supposed to be mga anak nila, kaya naging binipisyaryo sila, supposed to be pinag-aaral nila mga anak nila. At binibigyan ang pagkain? Yes, hindi naman ho pinag-aaral. Meron din ho kami na nare-rescue namin, pamilya, Beneficiary din po yung sa marquee assistance natin, housing assistance ng DSWD, pero sa karsada pa rin po nakatira. Yung sa pagtawid pamilya, Pilipino program, ang tinutukoy mo, 78 billion. 78 billion ang ginastos ng gobyerno noong 2017. Pituput, walong billion. 2018, 89 billion, 408 ang ginastos. Pero walang pera para sa mga welfare officers. Wala po. Walang pera para sa welfare officers sa barangay, walang pera para sa welfare officers sa kapulisan, DILG. May problema ba kayo doon sa nakikita nyo ang nangyayari yan? On the part of uh, the DILG, of course, uh, our responsibility is to ensure that DILG use uh, should be involved in this. But uh, because it is uh, under the... Uh, mandate of the DSWD, uh, meron po kaming uh, local, council. local council for protection of children. So ito, ito namang uh, council na ito to ensure that our uh, children are being supervised and being taught of the uh, right, on, right on and wrong. So doon po ang aming uh, uh, involvement, but uh, with the new proposal, itong bagong deal, uh, we intend to make sure that the uh, provincial government shall exercise uh, supervision on this. Ay, nimbita ko lahat ito mga ito para makita natin yung buong problema. Then, nung isang araw, wala ang DILG, wala ang kapulisan, uh, andun sila uh, attorney Oko, ang dami tayo, andun ang National Police Commission. Pero nakikita ko, ang problema, hindi yung liability lamang ng children, it is a systemic, holistic situation that we need to solve. And I can see everybody agree. And that's why I said, piliin natin to by hook or by crook. Tinawagan ko personal si General Albayaldi kagabi, Diyos Oras na ng gabi, at siniguro ko, tinawagan ko Executive Secretary, papuntahin nyo yung DILG Secretary, papuntahin nyo yung Chief PNP, and hanggang ka in fairness to them, sabi na pupunta kami. Sabi ko, hindi kalaban yung mga kumukontra. Ang kapi natin lahat tayo dito. The objective here is to follow the Constitution Make an honest man out of the government, if you want to call it a man or a woman, I don't want to be, gen I want to be gender correct, no? And make sure that what we promise in the law, 
will happen. Are we agreed on that, ladies and gentlemen? Ano? So, if we go to another situation, I, no, I just add this, para di man to, to uh, put uh, fuel in the fire. Another one, do sa EDSA, this was a good lupe. Meron ba yan? O uh, yung tumatalo din sa loob ng auto, mga bata. Kami na nyo yung sa jeep. Sa good lupe, madalas. At, uh, can you show? Ano ba? So, nakakatakot. Mamamatay yung bata. Tumatakbo yung auto sa EDSA. Lulundagin yung auto. Ilalawin siyang kamay. Ayan o. Nakuna ng isang dashboard camera. ABS-CBN yan. We research eh. Tinitingnan natin. O lahat. O. Ayan na yung bata. Nasa kita ng kanya. Chubichempo. Ayun. Lumundag na. Naago na yung bag. Tumak mo na. Eh kung may barin yun, patay yung bata. Kung may sumusunod na sasakyan at binawandan, nasa gasaan yung bata, talo na naman yung bata. Well, of course, ang bata has to have some accountability. I think we all agree with that, I hope. Now, I ask now, when is the time? Is it a number? When is the real age? You know, I learned in philosophy, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore, I am. Di ba? Therefore, kung nakakaisip na yung bata, di ba, four-year-old child or five-year-old child, pinasok yung kamay sa apoy, napasok, hindi na uulit yun. Tama po ba yun, mga psychologists? Ms. Alampay. Yes, sir. Part of the reason they keep repeating the crimes is because there there is no accountability or no consequences. Um, so that's partly why also. Now, what would be the consequence that we should do then? We cannot lock them up. We don't want them lock, to lock them up, right? Of course. Uh, and, 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 and in fairness, even under Article uh, of the Civil Co of the uh, Penal Code, uh, Civilized Penal Code, nine years old no arrow. Wala ako narinig, maybe I'm not researched well, na mga bata na kinulong mm -hmm. automatically. Dinadala sa welfare bill, dinadala sa ako. Mas maganda pa ano ng patakbo eh. Dahil ko konti pa ang tao eh. Di ba? Ako nagpupunta sa welfare bill, by the way, nung nasa college ako, every Saturday. Para tumulo doon. Pero at the same time, huwag yung nasasabi kay Mrs. Gordon, magaganda yung mga tiga merulong kasamay namin na doon eh. So we were socializing. Uh, but, but also, we were helping, and I enjoyed it. Uh, to make a long story short, to araw maraming ganun. But, uh, you agree na may accountability. When do we start teaching ac accountability and where? Siyempre sa pabiga. Yes, sir. And the kinds of consequences we might impose on a child should be different from an adult because their developmental age and immaturity will mitigate no, their culpability. So, ang pagka, uh, pagkaunawa natin based on studies also is that uh, their brains are still developing. And in fact, uh, developing unto the 20s, sir. No, there is no clear demarcation whether it's 12 or 15 or 9, unto the 20s. But most countries say 10, 9, India says 7, the Nordic countries say 18, uh, who, you know, you that can have true. a 25 year old as I pointed out. So, yes. But, but you know, the public requires an age. Right. Diba? Right. And so, and, but, but I really, what the public really wants is to solve the problem, correct? Yes. Hindi naman ikulong. Nobody is asking ikulong yan eh. Mm -hmm. Pero kailangan, the public wants the child to be ministered to, to, be, to have his problem addressed. Would that be correct, ma'am? Yes, po. The consequences have to be formative. No? Restorative. I have two hearings this today, and with all due respect to my colleague, I I I voted for his bill. 2006. 2006. I voted for it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Paolo, you want to say something? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so I think uh, spare me the courtesy. Just go to the point. I, yes, Your Honor. Uh, way back before the. Juvenile Justice Welfare Act was uh, adopted in 2006. 
it was also pointed out that uh, the proposal was originally to have the minimum age of criminal responsibility at 12. Yes. And the committee hearings, uh, particularly of the Senate, would also show that, Your Honor. But during the deliberations, and this is where the empirical data has been proven effective, especially to our dear legislators, that the development age for the Filipino child is at least 15 years old. And that has been a big jump from 9 years old up to 15 years old. But we so are now lobbying for 15. We are seeing... Why not 18? Uh, uh, your Honor, 21. Your Honor, again, it's based on the empirical data, uh, empirical evidence that had been presented then. The only point here, Your Honor, um, considering, I, I'll just put on two points. One is that there is no empirical data that is being presented to go down to 12 or even lower. The empirical data that we have still points at 15. Now, with the scenario that was presented earlier, uh, the children would have been apprehended correctly, would have been booked. But at the same time, uh, it's not a choice. Based on the law, it's not a choice whether you call the parents, the barangay, or the local social worker. All of them should be called. And it's not a choice whether just to give it to the parents because that is precisely what Dr. Alambay's point is. It's without accountability. The law points to well, I was the one who pointed accountability. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Director Lambay just agreed with it, all right? Let's be honest. I, I, I stand corrected, Your Honor. I stand corrected, Your Honor. But uh, the point here, Your Honor, is that the child should not be just left scot-free with the parents, with the barangay. And as pointed out by the barangay, uh, Your Honor, the problem is the lack of social worker in facilities. I, I, that's where I'm headed. I'm on your yes, side. Yes, Your Honor. That, that's why I am pointing out, Your Honor, that uh, it's really a problem of the implementation of the current law, Your Honor. That's very simplistic because I will tell you, the empirical data shows na kahit ahuling mo yung bata, from the judges, walang nahuling matanda. Walang mahawak ng bata na nakukulog. May, there's, again, there's a fault in the system. That's why I invited the Justice uh, Secretary here. Nagpadala siya ng ASEC. Nakilala ko na. Uh, matagal. O ano sa inyo dyan? Sabi ng mga judge, hindi nyo rin uhuli at napapawalan ka agad yung mga bata. Di ba? Dahil mabagal ata ang takbo ng mga prosecutor, prosecution officials natin. Mr. Chairman, yes. just, just very quickly on that point. Um, the law, as amended, specifically provides for liability of uh, individuals. Exploitation of children, Section 20C, for commission of crimes. This is a uh, public law. No, it was in, yes, but uh, just to reiterate, because uh, uh, any person who is in the commission of a crime makes use, takes advantage of, or profits from the use of children, including any person who abuses his or her authority over the child, uh, or with abuse of confidence takes advantage of Voldemort, of the child and shall induce, threaten, or instigate the commission of the crime. And the penalty is the maximum prescribed by law for the crime committed. So if the, if the penalty, for example, for drug trafficking, uh, it, its maximum is reclusion perpetua, the parent who induces the child to go into drug trafficking will be punished with reclusion perpetua. The excuse, law is excuse me, uh, Brad, no? Nasabi ko na yan eh. Kasi nasabi ko nga, Ayan ang batas. Pero walang nagsa-charge. Precisely. And, 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 and ang police hindi nagsa-charge. Hindi ito fix the blame time, ha? I'm not fixing the blame. I did not bring you here to fix the blame. That's why I challenge your empirical data. Scientifically, maganda yung data. Mapag-aaralan natin lahat. Pero on the ground, from the barangay captain, to the judges, to the parents, to the teachers, to the, to the lack nakakulangan ng mga welfare officers, yung mga police, maybe hindi na be properly mga police, maybe uh, the Secretary of Justice is not briefing his lawyers properly, maybe, ito, no, no, no parents charge, no case where the police completed arrest of the adult involved in child cases. How many have been charged? Do you know, uh, General Albelde? Oh, may bumubulog din sa likod. Yeah, we bulong, movement. 
Terima, Mas Re. Terima nanti sama kepolisian. We are trying to fix the problem here, please. We both know the law. And we all know that. Ang problema like in any kind of country, hindi na enforce eh. Mr. President, another factor in the lack of enforcement is precisely the coddling of corrupt PNP, of corrupt local officials, of corrupt MMDA traffic enforcers, the coddling of these kids. These children, for 13, 14, 15, hindi maglalakas ang loob niyan kung walang backer ng mga sindikato. And this was actually information, intelligence information, raised during our hearings, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, when we were amending the law, na marami dyan sa mga batang hamog, in fact, mag, ay hawak ng mga, may mga backer ng mga sindikato. Uh, perhaps the, the PNP has information regarding this, uh, but that was the information related to us. Maglalakas ng loob ba ang 13, 12 years old kung wala siyang backer na, na corrupt na police, corrupt na tanod, corrupt na MMDA official dyan sa may EDSA, na pagka sila ay hinuli, titimbrehan lang, tapos pakakawalan din. Uh, Sindikato, in other words, in ang fairness, gumagamit. In fairness, uh, Brad, I'm willing to stipulate na mayroong mga nag-aalaga. I'm willing to stipulate that mayroong mga nag-aalaga ng mga polis. Mayroong mga nag-aalaga ng barangay official. At mayroon rin, hindi mo sinabi, yung mga parents na pabaya. Lahat ng parents na nangyayari yan, nagpabaya. Doon nagsisimula. That's why, I'm attacking the system. I'm not attacking the penalty. I'm not attacking any policeman. That's why you were not there the other day. I asked everybody to be here because I am going to propose some solutions and you and I will have to make the policies that have to make sure that those laws are enforced. We have to move forward. Hindi pwede. Kasalanan ng polis. Eh, ayun na eh. Pag sinundan nyo yung TV kanina, yung lumulundag, merong superintendent na Makati na andun. Ano ginagawa niya? Hinuhuli namin yan. Eh, pag nahuli na, ano ginagawa? Eh, pinapalabas na kung sulado eh. Pinapalabas yung... Ando niya, nakalagay yun. Hindi ko na sinabi nga yun eh. Hindi ko na sinabi yun. And that's illegal. I'm sure that uh, my brother is gonna say, oh, illegal yan. So, ang tanong ko, hindi pa nasasagot, the General Bayalde, how many cases have you undertaken where the police failed to file charges? Ano ba, yung sa mga bata na nahuli natin ang PIDEA, na nahuli natin, ni-rate natin, andun, yung bang nagpapatakbo nung den, yung bang nagpapatakbo na mga bata, ikinunong ba natin yun? Nahuli ba natin yun? Sir? Yes, sir. Uh, in 2016 alone, we have a total... No, no, sir. Let me just ask one, that question first. Ano ginawa? Tinanggal natin yung hepe. Yes. Pero yung nagpapatakbo they nung, were nung den na yun, they were charged. In they were charged. Yes, yes, sir. Are they, they in jail right now? Yes, sir. They because that is a capital offense. Yes. Uh, for uh, no billion. Of, of uh, and child exploitation. Can you give us the names of these people? Para lang mapayapa kami rito ni Senator Pangilina na meron na kulong. At ito, matagal lang nangyayari, pero ngayon lang nagkaroon. Hindi ba? At talaga, nakita ko, nagalit ang presidente. Sinabi niya, galit na galit. I think nakita niyo, kaming dalawa nag-uusap, na? Uh, nung uh, nung uh, state dealer ng Sri Lanka, President, ganito na galit siya because mga bata, tinang tutulak, 8 years old, tinahihitid, 4 years old. Eh ako rin, magagalit. Ako ako mayor talaga eh. Mayor rin ako eh. So, talagang hindi ko mapaya ganyan. So, at least nagulong. Do you have the name, sir? The name with me, sir. The names of the, the people behind that den. I don't have the name with me, sir. I'll, I'll find it out. I'll, I'll uh, check it out, sir, and give it to you. Uh, would you mind submitting those names and calling the people behind you? You have several police aides there. But yes, awagan sir. nyo lang kung ngayon at sabihin dito para nakikita natin may nangyayari. Yes, sir. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. But that's the way I am. I will. When you say something, you have to prove it to us that meron nangyayari doon. Yes. So, ibig sabihin, Ang tanong ko ngayon, going back to you, bago ko pupunta rito sa kay Rom, kay Romel, no? ang tanong ko ngayon, ilan ang mga polis dati na nanguhuli ng ganyan na nag-file doon sa mga tao na pinipilit mag-alaga ng mga bata para sa kasamaan na ganyan? Pero sa mga judges, pag tinatanong ko, pati Chief Justice, tinatanong ko, wala, wala eh. Wala. Tanggapin natin kung nagkulang tayo because 
ang mga gagawin nating policy rito kung madadala natin sa Senado ito, ay eh, talagang magigipit tayo dyan. Sir? I don't have the data as of this But time. you know that there are cases na may nakukulong naman? Yes, sir. Yes. Or you're not sure? Uh, you don't have to say yes if you're not sure. Mas pangit we, can pagka, we can generate the data, sir. So, would you say, there's a gentleman beside you, I think his name is Police Superintendent, Chief Superintendent sa Rona. Kaya pa ho kayo bumabilong, bubulong. May ba ang general na mga wibulong movement sa PNP? <laughs> so, so, alam niyo ho yung information. Ang tanong ko sa inyo, sa experience niyo, Meron ba kayong narinig, nalalaman na mga nakulong na ng mga pulis na humuli o meron bang puling pulis na nahuli ni katulad ng sinasabi ni Senator Pangilinan na humahawak nito at naparusahan? Um, good morning, Mr. Chair, Your yeah. Honor. Uh, as far good morning as po, pero spare me the courtesies. Ang bamadali po tayo dito eh. As far as uh, uh, PNP involved, Your Honor, we don't have uh, any case uh, well in our PNP officials uh, were found to be involved. Wala pa kayo nun? Wala pa. Nasa kalaban nyo? Wala pa, sir. So, sa future, siguro magkakaroon na? Kung I'm meron sorry, man. I'm sorry, sir. Sa future, kung meron kayo nalaman ng pulis na nag-aalaga, ikukulong niya? Yes, of course. Of course. Pero wala kayo intelligence na meron mga pulis na nagbabackup niyan? We have uh, our counterintelligence uh, with respect to any illegal involvement of our PNP personnel. Siya yung nakikinig ko sa atin, pag nandito sa session hall, I hope you know over tayo ng TV, dapat narinig yung sinasabi nyo, dapat may mangyayaring gano'n. Yes, Your Honor. And it's all right with me because ang daming ginagawa ng pulis. <laughs> may insurgency, may drugs, ito mga bata, may lahat. So, all I'm trying to do is focus your lenses or your eyes and your minds into the most important, you heard me uh, cite the Constitution chapter and verse and the PD-603 and the Family Welfare Code, pero hindi nangyayari. So kung talagang pinaka-importante pa nga sinabi ko na bata na asset ng bansa, dapat lahat ng gagawin ng WES, ng barangay, ng teacher, ng police, ng Secretary of Justice, ng PIDEA, ng kapulisan, ng mga psychologists, ng mga welfare officers, ay para matulungan ng bata. Tama po ba yan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm glad you agree. Now, let me hear Romel here. Attorney, Panyero. Sige ho. Uh, magandang umaga po. Uh, Romel Ar Arbit Ar Arbitria po. Arbitria. Apo. Um, ang organization po namin, Senator, ay um, ang isa sa mga purpose is to know if the law, RA 9344 as amended, is implementable. So what we did po... Uh, wait a minute. Implementable or yes. being implemented? Implementable. Ah, so you're challenging na hindi implementable yung batas? Noong 2010 po kasi yun yung mga tanong. Gustong papalitan kasi hindi daw matutupad. So what we did... Alin doon po yun? Yung buong batas. Yung maraming reklamo dati. So ang ginawa po namin... Ay pakisite nyo. Wala po ako noong 2010. Hindi eh. ko sila doon noon. Eh. Oh. Na may hirapan daw po no? na pababain ang, krimina, ang juvenile delinquency sa 9344 kasi wala daw ginagawa sa mga bata. Mm -hmm. so, yung argument nila noon. Yun yung argument nila. So ang ginawa po namin, nakipag-partner po kami sa marami po na nandirito ngayon. Sage R, DILG, even yung mga local governments na mga nandirito ngayon ay ka-partner namin. Isa po sa mga barangay na maging partner namin ay ang Batasan Hills ni Councilor Dubica. At nakita po namin doon, nahirap na hirap po yung mga barangay na ipatupad yung 9344. Dahil po yung mga pinag-uusapan po natin na nakakarating ng mga kaso sa polis, sa fiscal, sa judges, ay kakapiranggot na lang po yan ng mga numero ng mga kaso ng bata na kinakaharap ng mga barangay. So kung baga, yun yung hindi kaya ng barangay na nadadala sa polis, kaya medyo mabigat na yung napupunda sa polis. Uh, Paulit-ulit na yung nakukuha ng mga polis kasi yun na po yung pinapasa ng barangay. Pero karamihan po ng mga kaso, mga first-time offenders, barangay po yung humahawak. At nakita namin na alam nila yung batas, alam nila na hindi pwedeng sakta ng bata, alam nila na protektahan, pero hindi nila alam kung paano gagawin. At wala silang budget. Ang mga volunteers lang po ng barangay ang gumagawa nito at 24 hours po sila na volunteers. Iba sinasabi mo hindi nila alam ang gagawin dahil lamang sa budget o 
kulang sa orientation. Kulang sa training. Kasama po yun, sir. Kaya nga po yung ginawa na kay sir. Hindi pa din. Madali magsabi yung kasama lahat sir. Kasama yung magulang. Ang barangay, sila ang frontline. Ito, binabato ko kay Ed Anyo, who is a very capable officer. Ngayon, nasa local government siya. Baka may gap doon na hindi natin train yung mga barangay. E lakbay, aral ang lakbay yung mga kapatid natin barangay. Pero ayun ako, natututo yung mga yan. No, sige nga, Romero. Um, ako, sir, yun isa po yung... Isa-isa mo na, isa-isa mo na. Yung budget, alam ko na yun. Oh. Ako, sir, uh, yun po yung kakulangan. Training. Training. Sa, orientation. Sa orient hindi na po, sir, orientation. Malaking attitude. training. Attitude din po, sir. Uh, attitude. <laughs> hindi naman po, marami po ang mga galing sa barangay. Oo, oh, mukha ka ba? Totoo po yan, sir. Tatakbo ka ba ang congressman din? Ano na? <laughs> Wala po akong budget, sir. <laughs> Mabuti naman. <laughs> All right. So, I think... Uh, The reason why I ask these questions is because you know, you know, orientation, no? So, yes, Rani, you want to say something? Uh, yeah. Captain Rani has been a barangay captain of long standing. Yes, salamat po. Isa po kasi sa problema, alam mo namin ang aming gagawin, kaya na po pagdating po sa prosecution na, uh, gaya ho ng aktual namin ginagawa, meron po kami yung gustong uh, pakulong, basin nga lang ho sa RA 7610, yung uh, kapabayaan ng mga magulang na nasa yung nasa karsada na nagmamalimos, na yung nag batang hamog, na nagiging uh, hindi maganda, delikado sa kanilang lugar, nire-rescue namin yon Nakita namin residibis na. Kinuha namin yung magulang. Yung magulang, eh, ganun pa rin po. Uh, ang number of exploiter ng mga bata, magulang. Pero hindi nyo dinimanda yung magulang? Dinimanda ho namin ang, ang magulang. Ito po ngayon ang tanong. Yes, kami po. Ante po ngayon tanong. Dahil pag tinanong ho ng polis at ng fiscal yan na po, Siyam ang anak ng, uh, ng, uh, ng magulang. Paano naman daw yung ibang anak? Uh, walang preno. Iyo po. Oh, kay nino naman, oh, kay nino, sino naman mag-aalaga sa mga batang yan? Yes, sino naman daw mag-aalaga? So may, may bakante, may sabi nga no, mga matatalino kaklase ko, may lakuna sa batas. Eh, Opo, may kulang po talaga sa batas. Kaya nga po kami, sa aming po experience, ang ginagawa ko namin, positive ang nanay, positive ang tatay, walang anak buhay ang tatay, o, uh, nanay, wala rin nga anak buhay. Sinishelter na lang ho namin dahil yung bata, residibis na eh. Nagsasawa na kami okay. sa kahuli. Counselor, tatawin ko nga ang USEC natin sa DSWD. Ewan ko, ba't di dumating dito eh, ang, ang secretary. At saka pati na rin ang secretary of justice. Sabi nyo, uh, hindi natin alam kung ano gagawin dahil yung parents, uh, siya mga anak, tapos sila nagtutulak. Ngayon, ako, ang sagot ko dyan, eh, hindi ba dapat magkaroon tayo ng, uh, uh, ika nga, eh, halfway homes na dadalhin yung bata sa isang uh, either foster parent care or uh, uh, juvenile home. Ano ko, kung papasok doon yung pag-asa. Hindi, uh, uh, baka hindi doon eh. Dahil uh, kung pinababayaan ng magulang, hindi na aabot eh. Kung yung magulang babaya, hindi naman naglulukoy yung bata, eto na dyan napapasok yung visitation ng DSWD. Di ba? Yung una, wala pang crime eh. Maraming bata. Yung barangay, kung tatawin natin, sino ang mga parents dyan na maraming anak? Ano ang economic level ng parents dyan? Ano ang kakayahan? So, kandidato yon na bisitahin. Kaya, kahit nabigyan mo ng four piece yan, kulang yung pera. Correct? Okay, so ano ang suggestion ng DSWD? Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Our Before suggest... I do that, I have to pay my Thank respects you. to the lovely, alluring, and very able Secretary. Uh, Dari Secretary, nanti pala. The uh, Senator. Yes. Senator Lisa Ontiveros. Good morning. Our, our, we have been fighting for the budget of the DSWD, Your Honor. We lack budget, therefore, we cannot hire more social welfare. An example of that, Your Honor, uh, please. That's not my question. I know you lack the budget. And we will address that in just a few more minutes. All right? The question is, what is your suggestion to a situation where a family, and I bring it to the psychologist also, a family is stricken. They're challenged economically. They live in a hovel. They have no showers there. They have to uh, carry water 200 yards away. Huh? 
they live in one room. They eat in the same room, they sleep in the same room, there is no playground, and yet they have nine children. What are the suggestions in case you mga parents are leaving, leading their children to a life of ill repute or could have the tendency to do that? Your Honor, the DSWD has already addressed that gap. In fact, in our, oh. in our far piece, Your Honor, every month we conduct family development session. And the four Ps, in the amount of 500 for the help, Your Honor, cannot be given to them if they are, they are not present during family uh, development session, Your Honor. That's a monthly family development session for our four Ps beneficiaries. What goes on in this family development session? This the, is your we, chance to tell us what you're doing. The, there is a module on the proper parenting. No, I don't need a module. Just tell me. Para wala ba nang mga mababatas, kung ano nangyayari, pagka kayo ay kasama nyo yung mga magulang na ganyan, pamilyang ganyan na talagang severely challenged by economic difficulties. Severely challenged because of ignorance of how to raise children properly, of giving them an education. Oh, no. Ano yung susunod, yung psychologist, ano dapat ang gawin natin? The social workers trained at the DSWD conduct, conduct trainings for these parents, Your Honor. Training? Yes, Your Honor. It's during the sessions. We have, I have with me the social, the social ano worker. Training? Ano training? Ano klaseng training? That's for, hindi pa gumagawa ng, ng, ng oh, naiingat-ingat ako sasabihin ko eh. Hindi pa gumagawa ng katiwalian yung bata, hindi pa nalululod sa masamang bisyo o masamang uh, gagawin. Hindi pa nagiging hamog. Uh, the training includes parenting effectiveness, effectiveness seminar at, and livelihood programs, Your Honor. I have here a record. What's the armor? Use of labor participation. Meron tayong unemployment rate, di ba? What is that? Yung, yung, huh? Can you give it to me and know something a little bit? Your labor participation, as you said, is going to be higher. They are not looking for work. They are not looking for work. That's it. Unemployment is going down. It's going down. The labor participation rate that they are looking for work is also going down. Four in the world of 10 Filipinos who are should be together with the labor force are not looking for jobs anymore. Suko na, hindi kami makakagawa ng trabaho. Kasi sabi nyo, bibigay ng livelihood. So, ang employment rate 94.7%, ang employment rate 5.3%, under employment rate 16.4%, labor force participation rate is 60.9%. Anong ginagawa nung hindi na makakuha ng trabaho? Siyempre, hindi naman pwedeng wala silang pagkakakitaan. Kanya-kanya racket na mangyayari dyan. Nakikita ko, tumataho si Pangsur Rani. Dahil magkakaroon ng kanya-kanya racket dyan, di ba? O anak, wala tayong makain. Sumiple ka na doon. O mag-wetingero ka, mag-tend ka ng weting, di ba? Lang tiket ng weting. O uh, mag-shine si boy ka, or uh, yun ang hinahanap. Hindi nakikita sa statistics yan. And that's why, ha? Child porn. O yan, ginagamit. Magpapakuha yung bata. So, yun ang hindi natin nakikita. And that is a challenge for the SWD. Na sinasabi nyo, meron kayong development uh, meetings, titentay niya yung tao, ano ang success rate niyan? Si hindi basta sasabihin natin, baba natin o taas natin eh. Kailangan susukin natin yung uh, problema. I'll be with you well. Is there an answer? Ah, uh, under the Sustainable Livelihood Program, Your Honor, that's, that's one challenge that we encountered in the past two years, considering that as to the requirements that were provided before by the previous uh, administration under the SWD, um, we found out that it is not really feasible for these beneficiaries to comply all 17 requirements. There was a six-month social preparation in which before they will be given uh, financial assistance for a livelihood program, Your Honor, they will undergo six months social preparation. The problem there is the attendance of this 
uh, supposed beneficiaries. So, yun, that was the I, I hope, I'm sorry. I, hindi ko hagip yung sinasabi mo. Palagang napakaliit. Sabi nga, yung painting ni Andrew White, ang laki-laki ng dagat mo, Panginoon, pero yung bangka ko napakaliit, ang lalaki ng alon. Parang gano'n na sinasabi niya. Let me ask the psychologist, what do, what do you think? Yes, sir. I agree with you that these families are really undergoing severe challenges. Yes. You know, the parents are unemployed, uh, they're uneducated. So it's also, I think, inaccurate to uh, say that the family is the root cause no, of, of these problems. Kasi nga, tulad ng sabi niyo, it's systemic. So ang kailangan po ng pamilya ay intervention. No? In fact, I'm also part intervention programs po that would uh <laughs> sino bibigyan ng intervention i i have the answer yes, i think uh, i have the answer but i want to hear yours well civil society could contribute but these have to be trained people government of course social workers government muna di ba yes of course um social workers no um and other mental health professionals in okay. government patawarin niyo ha una ako na kayo okay. di sa nagmamarunong ano Nagsimula tayo sa editor, no? Sinabi ko lahat yung sila pangako ng, ng batas. Constitution, PD603, Family Welfare Code, lahat, di ba? PPP, gumawa ah, tayo ng Department of Social Welfare and Development, dinevolve natin, ang dami. Pero hindi ba totoo, number one, kung hirap yung magulang, ano ang salvasyon ng bata? Eskwela. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you agree? Yes. Ma'am? Yes, sir. So, kung pupunoy natin, ang budget natin sa eskwela ay 600 billion. Alam niya? 600 billion sa parlan, sweldo ng teacher. Pero pagdating sa eskwela, wala namang guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. Iisa bawat eskwela, maswerte na. Mm -hmm. O, oh, magluluko na ako rito ngayon, ha? Sabi niya, mabobola na ako. Sabi niya, nangangako na ako dito. I am going to force the issue. Government, put your money where your mouth is. Thank you, brother. Yes. Put your money where your mouth is. Senators, Congressman, put your money where your mouth is. Supposing I say, bawat palapag, ito, tipid pa ito, dalawang palapag, isang guidance counselor. Pwede? Elementary high school yan, ha? Bimaso nag-aaral ko sa nag-aaral ko sa public school ng grade uh, kindergarten ako. Wala pa akong malay halos nun. Nag-aaral ko sa St. Teresa's grade 1. Wala pa rin ako masyado malay. Ma ma Mahig pa siya mga madre. Grade 1. Nag-aaral ko sa Latran. Ako, medyo natuto ako ng konti sa buhay. Nag-jeep ako. Sasakay ako. Pupunta ako sa pier. Sasakay uh, para makabot sa Latran. Grade 5, 6, Lourdes. Gaya ako sa Ateneo. Ateneo, nagulat ako. Bakit? Bawat hanay ng corridor namin, kung freshman ka, merong student counselor na pare, na pagka may problema ka, dadaling pupunta ka doon. At sasabi mo sa bahay, ay, ma'am, uh, father, I, I have a problem. I cannot keep up with my work because my parents are not here. O yung iba, nakakaroon ng problema, tatawagin ng counselor. O tatawagin ng principal. In other words, may nakatuto. Sa public school, tinanong ko yung mga staff ko na na public school, halos wala. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, how you did? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Tinanong ko ang Department of Education, di ata dumating, ha? Yun. Yes, ma'am. Si, ang uh, dumating pala, si Miss Maribu. Tama ba yan? Ilan na social guide, uh, uh, guidance teacher nga? Yes, that is correct, Your Honor, but it's not just a problem of salary but also a problem of supply, Your Honor. Hindi pa ako tapos. Huwag mo nang dagdagan yung problema. Binabaril mo ka agad eh. Gagawa tayo ng trabaho marami. Kung maglalagay tayo ng guidance counselors dyan, auction, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. Okay? Tapos, kung maglalagay tayo ng throughout officer, tatanungin ko naman itong mga barangay, liga. Bawat barangay, dapat may throughout officer, dapat alam ng barangay captain, alam ng kusyal ng barangay lahat, kung sino ang malalaking pamilya, sino ang mga pamilya na may anak na hindi pumapasok. Pwede o dipindi? Pwede po, sir. Pwede. So, DILG, kung sasabihin ng DILG ngayon, 
may memorandum yan, magre-report kayo lahat, re-report yung monthly, iyong pumapasok at hindi pumapasok. Pwede? Pwede mo, sir. Kaya po. Now, I asked my staff earlier, for every peso that is collected in taxes, ilan ang pumupunta sa local government, sa mga LGUs? Ha? 30? 20%. Hindi ata. Sabi ni Sarah Torrecto, iba eh. Ang alam ko, halos ka lahat eh. 30 centavos out of every peso goes to local government. Binabahagi, depende sa populasyon, depende sa teritoryo, sa probinsya, sa siyudad, sa munisipyo, at saka sa mga tao. Correct? Tama po. Pero may mga budgetary requirement na ceiling din ho kasi ang mga barangays na nilalagay ho ng local government code na pwedeng punduhan lang ho ng barangay. Kaya nga, kaya nung sinasabi ko yung throughout officer, tumihin na ho ka agad kay Ed Anyo, kay Secretary Anyo. Pwede o bibindi? Ah, uh, yun o, pwede-pwede po. Pwede-pwede. So, ayan. Meron tayong throughout officer sa barangay, sila na doon sa barangay, papasyal lang yun bago mag-upisa ng eskwela, sino po mapasok, sino hindi po mapasok. Right? At pagka na ando na, report sa eskwela, yung principal, may ugnayan rin, sa parents' sister association, papasok sa barangay, ito mga bata na ito hindi po mapasok, pupuntahan ng throughout officer, o humiikot, ba't di ka po mapasok? Ang araw may ganun eh. Yes. Sir, ang problema kami po sa barangay, sa batasan, bumabawaw kami by sitio by sitio mm. at uh, talaga po, 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 yes, by porok by porok at yung BCPC namin, talagang uh, binibigyan namin ng kaalaman yung mga so, uh, mas, mabilis. mas mabilis. Pero ang problema po talaga, marami pa rin po doon yung mga magulang may libre ho, nga, libre ang elementarya, libre ang high school sa amin sa Quezon City. Pero, Ayaw pa rin nyo pasok. Hindi ba tali mo ang magaling kong brad na abogado rin? Nasa batas yan. Hindi mo pinapahal yung anak mo. Tama po. Ka. Tama ba yung judge? Tumpak ba? So, walang magsisirculate tayo ng konting publicity sa lahat. Tingin mo yung ABC Press Council, o yung mga magulang na hindi pinapahal yung anak mo, pwede kayong matimandi dyan, makulong. Nag-try po kami mag-asunto, uh, uh, kasuhan, ang pamilya. Pero hindi muna tayo asunto. Nasabihin lang yan. Pero susundan, pagka nagbigay ng report, papasok ngayon ang DSWD at ang Department of Justice para sila gagawa ng kaso. G ginawa na po namin sa batasan po yan na ang lahat po ng mga magulang na census po na hindi nagpapaaral na kanilang mga anak ay pwede po silang asuntuhin. Uh, pero kahit ginawa mo na po ng galong uh, information dissimulation, yung magulang pa rin o oh, hesit at magpa-aral magpa po. Hindi. Ang sinasabi natin dito, hindi na excuse yun eh. Nasa batas yan. Tawag namin dyan, Duralex said Lex. It is exceedingly hard but so the law is written. Mahirap pero kailangan sundin. Ignorance of the law, hindi pwede. So ngayon, pinakalat na yan, ang truant officer may report, gagandahan lang ni Secretary Anya yung pagre-report, bibigay sa Department of Education, pupuntahan yun. Pag mamalasakitan ng gobyerno, yung mga bagay na ganyan. Tama? Tama po. Ito yung sinasabi dito. Maraming, uh, maraming mga bata hindi po mapasok because of family matters or financial concern. Nandito yung statistics. Hindi ko lang sasabihin. Nakakahiya. Eh. Pero sabihin ko, kung halimbawa, Department of Education, ma'am, pakita nyo nga yung litrato sa ibang bayan na yung mga bata kumakain sa eskwela. Kung yung mga bata may kapitiria na bawat eskwela, Papasok sila, may breakfast and lunch. Palagay nyo, makakabuti? Opo. Di lang sa karunungan, di lang sa nutrition. Opo. Pero may insentibo na pumasok para dumuno. At siguro mawawala doon, tama? Uh, opo. Isa po yung motibasyon ng mga bata na magpatuloy sa pag-aaral kapag may ipakain po sa eskwelahan. So, kung totoong sinsero ang tao, lahat, tayo ay gagamitin natin ang pera ng gobyerno para doon. Isa yan. Pagkatapos, dapat, o oh, ito, magkukomersyal ko ng konti. Mamaya nga. Ah. 
Boy Scouts. Wala na ako halos nakikita niyan. Girl Scouts. At yung pinakamagaling na organization, Red Cross Youth. Ipapasok natin yan. Meron tayong, meron tayong uh, memorandum of understanding, right? Para yung bata, may masasalihan doon na may oras. Dapat may sports program no araw, Department of Education and Sports. Hindi natin kaya, maglagay na lang kaya ng imbis na mga mga gandang barangay hall. Aray, sorry ha. Magay tayo ng gym na may nagtitraining na polis ng boxing. Doon sa Amerika, whatever. May badminton, may volleyball para may gagawin ng bata. Pero kailangan nag-aaral. Pwede ba yun, Ari? Pwede, pwede po. Pwede. So let us now say, you're able to do it. Now let's go to the welfare situation. DSWD, you need welfare officers, right? Yes, Your Honor. Ginagaya natin yung iba, 15 years old ang gusto natin, 18 years old. Tingnan nyo yung Japan. Free lunch for school children, no? 10 million kids. Kung gusto natin, kakayanin yan. Kikita pa ang palmer. Kikita ang mga gulayan natin. Kikita yung mga manuka natin. So, parang build-build-build yan, di ba? So, going from food, going to the extracurricular activities, we now go, may guidance officer ka na, para yung guidance officer makikita kung may problema natin itong bata ito hindi nag-aaral. Proactive. Pwede mo yan, DSO Uli? Yes, Your Honor, pwede. Para malungkot itong bata nito, umiiyak. O, wala na rason. Makain na siya. O, mahagip mo yan. Pwede? Yes, Your Honor. So, if you can give on a budget, nobody has ever really tried to do this. I'm hearing this for the first time, and I'm not saying akong magaling. Ito dapat nung pag ginawa ito, na kung totoong mahal natin, The training of youth for civic efficiency under the Constitution uh, shall be the primary concern of the state. Ilagay mo yan, imbis na mga kurakot, ibigay mo sa bata, that is an investment of the country. Correct? So may guidance officer ka, dadagdagan mo, ilan yung sinabi natin? Group of youth, one guidance counselor for every two. One guidance counselor for every two. Sasabihin ninyo, may kayo. Pero pag malalaman ng tao yan, lalo ba sa mga kuleyo, o oh, mag-aaral kayo dyan, prepare tayo dyan, hindi naman mangyayari overnight dyan, magagawa. Right? Pwede? And if you put guidance counselors also, or welfare officers, in, in the police department, alam nila sila magtatawag. Meron ng kwarto ang gagawin doon. Gumawa muna tayo ng container van muna na Nabibili ng 150,000 sa just sa isang nagbebenta niya. Mayroon ako niya sa Red Cross, 150,000. Air condition pa. Ha? Lalagay mo din yung bata, nandun na yung guidance counselors, nakarecord na yan. Kung may budget, magagawa. Right? Ma'am? Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. Miss Nery, right? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Bob, Mrs. Nery? Mrs. Your Honor. Mrs. Okay. Just want to be sure. Uh... Maraming binata rito, mga matatanda, biyudo, sa likod ko. <laughs> Ibiro lang ako para marilax tayo. So, we have created a little budget for that. So, kung yung CPP nagbibigay ng, seven, ng in 2017, 78 million, billion, 200,000, 18, allegedly papakanin, pwede mo nang ibawas yun doon, ilagay mo sa pagkain sa eskwela. Right? And let the parents now look for a job. And then TESDA can get the parents, mag-aaral ka, mag-tomorrow ka, and another extra curricular activity na ginagawa nung araw, nagtatanin yung bata sa eskwela o nag-aaral magkatam, nag-aaral maglagari, ginagawa nung araw yan, di ba? Pwede gawin yan, di ba? Tumigil na tayo dyan eh. Kasi ang naging role ng gobyerno is palaging nag-aabot sa tao. Wala nang gagawin ng tao na magsikap para matuto. I'm just, that's my own personal opinion. I don't know if the psychiatrist would agree with that. But that's just my personal opinion. We foster dependency. 
So all, all I'm just saying, ma'am, is kung gagawin natin yan, and then the family court, dapat, ang court ata dyan, eh, you know, ang napoy pa lamang is 50. Out of, I believe, out of 100 family courts that must be created, para may family courts na, at dapat may psychologist yan under the law. May budget yan. Magkano budget? 200 plus million. Diba? 400 million. 400 million in 2017. Hindi nagagawa. Mabuti ngayon si Seth Radio kung sabi, pag hindi nagawa, mawawala yan. So, kailangan pinitin natin, yan papasok ang COA, yan papasok ang Presidente, yan papasok kayo, at this WD, ba't hindi nagagawa yung mga family courts? Yan papasok ang Department of Justice or Supreme Court or the Court Administrator, correct? Pangyaro, Andre Asak, from the Great University of San Beda Law School. Salamat po. O, para magkakagad na bakit? Wala ba lang sasabing great kayo? Ako lang? Marami po. Marami, okay. So, what I just tried to share with you is something that we really tried to do the numbers, no? and it doesn't have to happen overnight. Nabigyan na natin lahat ng pulis ng karampatang taas ang sweldo. Ang mga sundalo natin, nabigyan na natin ng karampatang taas ang sweldo. Hindi ako namumuliti ka rito, ha? by hook or by crook. We put our money where our mouth is. If we say the young people are the most important, then... Well, I have the chairman of the Committee on Social Welfare, Women and Children, and I'm sure that two of us here will help her and really push for a budget. Don't make hypocrites out of all of us. Some may be hypocrites in the government, but if that is what we promise our people, dapat gagawin natin. Kung di natin magkuha yung kabuan, half a loaf is better than no loaf at all, and maybe next year, boom, tinapay na ang makukuha natin. There are other things that we are proposing. Yung courts, dapat may psychology, may, may psychiatrist yan. Yung uh, tapusin na yung mga pag-asa homes. Ano gagawa lang nyo? 50. Bahay pag-asa. Ilan nga nga, ilan dapat ang gagawin? 111. Huh? 114. We have to have a deadline. Hindi pwede. Maybe this year. Maybe next year. Maybe never. All right? Yes. Mr. Chair, on that point, uh, who, who may answer the question? Uh, when this law was enacted in 2006, how many uh, Bahay Pag-asa centers were there? How many Bahay Pag-asa centers were built uh, in the last uh, 12 years? Good question. Uh, so that we know the progress, because we're supposed to have 113 Bahay Pagasas, uh, as uh, earlier stipulated. We have 35. Uh, 55, 55. 55. So, so uh, how was, may, may we just have a, a narration of how did we get to 55, where did we begin, and how do we get to 113? From what time? From what year? Who will answer that? Attorney Oko? Ako na, sabi ni Atty. Oko. Um, Your Honor, the budget allocation provided for Bahay Pag-asa was only provided in 2013 um, when the law... 20? 2013, when the law was amended. 400 million. Which was 400 million. But even before that, there are already LGUs who were, uh, who have established their own uh, Bahay Pag-asa. Sandali lang po, stop there. Highly urbanized cities, local government units must do their share. Correct? Now, Correct, Your Honor. I direct my question now to my good friend, my esteemed colleague in the government, Secretary Eddie Yearly, Eddie Anyo. It took them several years. Now, sir, is it possible for you to call all the mayors, especially I know that you say this is an emergency situation, to prevent drugs, to prevent juvenile delinquency, and to build the nation. That is what I'm saying here. Well, all I'm saying is all these programs 
must now what I call be a contract with the young people of this country for national for national strength and development. Can the local government lead the charge in so far as building? Because they all have money. Ang gaganda ng city hall. Pumunta kayo doon sa Mindanao. Ang gaganda ng mga provincial capital. Lahat ng punta ko, ang gaganda ng kapitolyo. Pero para sa bata, awarin na po. Sir? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, we can direct the uh, LGUs to construct uh, their uh, bahay pag uh, But we have to come up with a standard para para pareha siya at saka the agencies involved should be mandatory. That is up to you. That is implementation. Yes. What I'd like to ask you most respectfully is to give them a deadline that you have the money and you better get the money done. You have local autonomy. Nabigyan na kayo ng local autonomy. Pero dyan, dapat gawin nyo. Yes, Mr. Sir. Uh, the, the problem is not going to go away. It can only get worse. There are uh, available funds for that uh, through the local government support fund. And also in our SGLG, actually, may mga provincia na nagsagawa uh, coming from the TCF fund. Yung uh, na-receive mo ng reward from the SGLG. So we will uh, require the LGUs, starting with the provincial government and the highly urbanized cities, that's 81 uh, uh, provinces and uh, 141 highly urbanized cities. Sir, 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 Kailangan ba ng dagdag pa na pondo, apart from the fund source that you mentioned, uh, kailangan pa ba ng dagdag na pondo para umabot tayo from 55 to 113 centers yes, as, yes, as needed? Yes, Mr. Can, can, can the good uh, secretary and uh, in coordination with Attorney Oco submit to us uh, the budgetary requirement to achieve 113 so that, uh, you know, we're still doing the, uh, we're still in the bicam of the budget and then we're just... Oh, yung 75 billion uh, pang dredging, baka preparing 2 billion. Yung mga plat-plat dyan. Dapat dun na dalin sa balay pag-asa. That is going to be my last day. Ang dami-dami plat project. Pero inagay muna natin yung pera dyan. Di ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. I believe that it would be better if... In the local support government fund, particularly on the uh, assistance to municipalities, pwede natin idagdag dito. Pakita nyo nga, Sandra, excuse me, General, no? Pakita nyo nga yung bahay sa Pasig. Yung Pasig. Can you show back the building of Pasig? Bahay Pagasa? Ayan. Diba? Wow, Philippines. So, uh, I, my question to you is to the PNP, to the SWD, to the Department of Education, and all the others here, and to the barangays, are you willing to have this new contract na yung sinasabi natin sa batas na tayo lahat public officials, uunahin natin ang bata para hindi lang for image purposes, I don't care about image, ang nakikita talaga yung katotohanan na gumaganda ang buhay ng bata sa Pilipinas. Pwede po ba kayong sumang-ayong lahat dyan at mag-commit? Kaya ako tinawag ito lahat kayo eh. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, is, isa pang point. What we want to to happen is, the Bay Pagasa will not just be reactive but proactive. Mean to say, itayo na natin siya, wala pang nakukumit na crime yung children para proactive rather than just uh, making this, making the uh, Pagasa as uh, a, uh, uh, a detention uh, area or detention uh, center or building. So in Bahay Pagasa, hindi pa nagkakaroon ng commission ng, ng uh, crime or uh, offense, magagamit na natin siya sa prevention. Pwede na mga counseling dito. Hindi naman yan for crime eh. It's for rehabilitation. Di ba? Huwag na muna natin gawin yun. Yung holding center na sinasabi ko, gawin natin. Pwede tayo gumawa na ko ng... Uh, isang uh, maliit na building o kung hindi natin kaya para sa mantala, kumuha tayo ng sinasabi ko na mabibili nyo, 150,000 to 250,000, pwede pag naging ng bata, at right away, kukunin yung bata, dadali sa bahay pag-asa kung wala pang ginagawa na lugar, no? So, all I'm saying is, all this is possible, pero kailangan lang yung commitment natin. 
Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator, uh, thank you. Lisa. Following up on the point of Senator Kiko, the author of the Juvenile Justice Act, naka-mandate nga po dun sa batas na iyon, makumpleto yung mga bahay pag-asa in all the provinces and highly urbanized cities. Tayo naman sa Senate at lumabas ito sa first hearing chair, we could exercise oversight dun sa mandates ng LGUs under the Juvenile Justice Law na gastusin yung 1% nung ira nila para sa local councils for the protection of children. And in fact, na sila makapag-appoint ng social workers para hindi naman kailangan yung DSWD pa ang gagastos para doon, pero yung LGUs mandated uh, para doon. So, and in fact, Mr. Chair, uh, ang, sa pagkaalam ko, nandito rin po yung head ng uh, Bahay Pag-asa ng Valenzuela. Uh, yung Bahay Pag-asa po sa Valenzuela was inaugurated during the term of our colleague, Senator Sherwin, nung sila pa ay mayor. Uh, and Valenzuela City is one of only two cities in Metro Manila with an accredited Bahay Pag-asa. Baka isa na yung ipinakita ni Chair sa Pasay. Yeah, the Bahay Pag-asa of Valenzuela has first level accreditation from DSWD. Uh, it has been described as uh, uh, well-ventilated rooms, enough space for kids to play, activities for children, and no pungent smell of human waste. So, isa pa konkretong halimbawa, Mr. Chair, to add to the recommendations you are presenting to us, na ang solusyon ay i-fully implement, i-fund, i-staff, tayuan ng infrastructure, yung implementasyon ng Juvenile Justice Act, at hindi ibaba yung MACR. Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead. Chairman, uh, just in, in addition, Mr. Chairman, and perhaps you can submit, kasi maganda yung pinakitang ba bahay pag-asa sa Pasig. Eh. Uh, these are best practices. And obviously, pagka na-implementa ng tama yung batas, merong resulta. We are focused on the issue of uh, children in conflict with the law, yung mga masasamang epekto, pero nasaan ang datos naman ng mga nakinabang dito sa batas na ito Dahil sa diversion program, nagkaroon ng pangalawang pagkakataon, nagkaroon ng uh, mas magandang kinabukasan, nagkaroon ng trabaho. Because I understand, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, as soon as this law was passed, for example in Marikina, there were several cases of individuals or uh, children in conflict with the law who were up for, uh, uh, they were being criminally prosecuted, uh, dinismiss yung kaso, nilipat sa bahay pag-asa, yung isa robbery. Pero after uh, he was rehabilitated by the bahay pag-asa in, Mar in Marikina, he became a gasoline uh, uh, station super uh, supervisor. Nagkaroon ng pagkalawang pagkakataon. Ganun din sa, uh, if I understand, Manila. Just one more point. In Manila, youth gang leader. Eh, at dahil dito sa batas na ito, siya ay nalagay sa diversion program. Kung wala yung batas na ito, eh, kinulong na yan at siguro nasa, nasa munting lupa na. Youth gang leader went through ERDA Foundation training and ended up now as one of eh, employed sa isang fast food. May trabaho ngayon at nagtutustos, nag, uh, nagastusin ng pamilya nila. We need this information for the committee to be guided so that we know precisely what the best practices are, ano ang posibilidad para maalagaan natin ang ating mga anak sa halip na ikukulong sila at sa halip na sila ay uh, ibababa ang uh, minimum age of uh, criminal or uh, uh, yeah, liability or responsibility. Mr. Chair. I've been trying to show the way here on what can be done. And I'm trying to get commitments from the secretaries. The best practice is a good idea. But if you haven't even completed all this Bahay Pagasa from 2013, did you say 2013? It's now 2018. Five years have passed. Sa family courts, only 50 judges have been filled only recently in 2017. So there is, buti nga, nakapag-appoint na uh, ang mga gobyerno natin ngayon since 2017 ng family courts. Now, what we want is to speed it up. All right? And when you have more of that, I'm sure lalabas siya. Nobody is arguing on diversion, on halfway homes. Nobody is arguing that. The argument is the, the state is on the carpet. They are not doing what they're supposed to do. So let me just continue. 
And please, I do not want to have advocacies here trying to tell me not get it to get on. I, I, I'm listening to everyone, but let us fix the problem first. Let us fix the problem first. But then it's time to blame it. Yes, Attorney Oko. Dagdag lang po, doon sa, meron po tayong link sa family courts at saka sa bahay pag-asa dahil napupuno po yung ating mga bahay pag-asa, pagkulang po yung mga judges natin dahil yung mga korte po natin, hindi po agad na decide ang kaso. So, meron na po kaming na-monitor na ganun yung nangyari. Na, Pangalawa, hindi pa nga nagagawa. Eh. Siyempre, uh, mapupuno yun. Opo, Kaya kailangan bilisan. Uh, That is the point here. Uh, two more points, Senator. No, no, uh, uh, I, We know the symptoms, all right? Yes, po, Senator. I mean, that's why I'm trying to religiously ask you individually the questions that has really created this problem. And the problem we know. Budget, as you said, hindi natin makukuha lahat ng budget yan, but we certainly are committed to making sure na when I report this on the floor, I will say, ito ang problema eh. Hindi kinagawa eh. As in many cases, the law is never implemented. I can cite you many things. I've, I've, I've enacted laws here, but that is enforcement, hindi kinagawa, conform me sa secretary. And that is why I'm asking them individually. That's why you will recall attorney Oka, uh, uh, Oko, nang isang araw, nag-uupisa tayo sa Oka eh. Uh, Oka, Oke, Oki, Oko, yun, Oke, Oko na tayo. Oke, okay. uh, A-E-O-U. Alright. Masyado na tayo intense eh. Anyway, ito ito ang story show. Ibig sabihin, kaya natin tinawag lahat siya because the other day you were here, wala naman itong mga cabinet secretaries eh. Di ba? Or now they're here, now they realize the problem because ang mga sec secretary ako, mabilis ang takbo niya mga yan eh. You have to step back and see ano ba hindi natin nagagawa? Ano ba ang kailangan gawin para magawa? It is my hope that the Senate is helping try to get it back into focus. So we can really focus on the real problem. All right? Mr. Chair. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, just to, um, I wanted to show you documentation on JJWC's uh, good practices of LGUs in the implementation of RA 9344 sa iba't ibang bahagi ng ating bansa, including Barangay Mintaw Davao City, including Barangay Payatas dito sa Quezon City, and uh, Uh, they have a uh, documentation, Surigao City, yun na nga po Davao, pati Pakibato, and Poblacion Districts, Naga City. Uh, just to make this a record, Mr. Chair, uh, La Trinidad Province, Bacolod City, Barangay Kabug, and Vicen Vic Vic Vincenzo Sagun LGU. And just to give two uh, brief examples, dun sa sinasabi ni Attorney Oko, partnership between the courts and the Bahay Pag-asa, in the implementation of the juvenile justice law, meron din po silang documented good practices uh, ng RTC Branch 106 dito sa Quezon City at saka RTC Branch 1 Batangas City. So meron po tayong, kapag ginawa na yung um, uh, review ng implementation ng juvenile justice law, before we even try to amend it, there are some good practices na pwede po nating tignan, Mr. Chair. Thank you. In truth and in fact, the Bahay Pagasas are still understaffed. True or false? True. That is what I'm trying to get into. I'm sorry. I get agitated because before we start saying, and in fairness to everybody, I like good practices. But before we even go there, baka sabihin nila, oh, okay naman na pala eh. Hindi okay eh. That's why we're in this hole. What we want is gawin natin lahat yung bahay pag-asa, gawin natin yung mga judges, gawin natin yung mga welfare officers na isa bawat barangay. Okay ba yun, boss? Dapat yes, meron tayong welfare officers sa bawat barangay. Sasabihin na naman ngayon, oh, ito ang problema. Sir, kulang ang mga welfare officers, hindi qualified. Yan ang gagawin ng gobyerno sa IRR. Kailangan ito ang qualification, sandali lang. Hindi ba magkakaroon ng maraming trabaho, yung iba nag-aaral na walang makuha ang trabaho? Mag-welfare officer ka, baka misigurado may trabaho ka. There will be 42,000 welfare officers created at ano ang kanilang SG? 11. 11, SG 11. At ang budget, kung gagawin mo yan, 
ay aabot ng welfare officer uh, sa sorry ha, sa bawat barangay is 10 billion I can get that money for you I will enact an immigration law na lahat ng mga overstaying amnesty bayad kayo and I computed that 10 billion exacto alright so let's go to the solutions muna and then let us see and I promise you kung ako pa ang justice committee pagbalik nito mga senator na mananalo I will, and even if I'm not I will ask for a monitoring of what is happening every quarter with the Bahay Pagasa with the hiring of all these people because yan ang kulang we are forgetting our oversight functions and we have oversight functions alright Mr. Chairman just, just very quickly precisely um, it was uh, we are identifying best practices so that we can persuade and convince these communities and local governments that have not bought into the the, the matter of building these uh, they don't have to buy in they have to that is the law precisely but precisely if you present if you present with, to them the best practices which is precisely why we're the election of duty right sir right sir Yes, Mr. Chair. When a local government official does not do what they're supposed to do, I don't best practice. You're in the election of duty. You don't do it, you will be suspended. Yes, but uh, well, with, with all due respect, if we present to them that there are solutions and there are actual, and they will learn from it, and all the more they will be convinced to support it. Yes, indeed, they have to support it. But it would be easier for them to, for us to rally support if we are able to provide the best practices as Rabiga, to see is to believe. Uh, so, well, yun lang ang punto natin, Mr. Chairman. Well, hello. Let me just say this. I think we're living in a country that is severely damaged by the years. I, I, I sometimes pinch myself that I may be too idealistic in trying to say this. But I'm willing to push it. If the government is not willing to enforce the law, then we have lost control. If the barangays are not willing to Make sure na magmalasakit sila at makita yung mga bata na hindi pumapasok. If the welfare is, wala budget, wala tayong magagawa. Here we are, we're saying, we have to look for the money and we will find the money because if we have to print money, we should print money and the hell with it. Because kung sinasabi ng gobyerno sa Constitution, the fundamental law of the land and all the laws that have been passed, susunod ang Secretary of Justice, susunod ang DILG, susunod ang Kapulisan bago natin sisihin. Hindi tayo, we won't tap our chest because kung walang bala yan, walang budget yan, talaga hindi gagawin at pagkatapos dapat imomonitor natin. And that's why we work very, very hard here and I know you all work hard, but let me tell you, I push my staff, wala na kami sa opisina, we still have conference calls. We discuss it on conference calls. And I say, saan pukukunin yung pera niya? Anong budget doon sa ibang basa niya? Eh, sasabihin natin, hindi natin kaya? I mean, ibibigay nyo, mas madaling magbigay eh. Pag inimbestir ka ng blue ribbon niyan, four piece, maraming mahuhuli dyan, maraming makukulong. Ang problema nga, hindi nga makulong pa eh. Inimbestir ka na yung, yung uh, dingbak siya. Pero pa susunod, yung mga pinagawang sit, uh, uh, barangay health centers na kinuha sa budget ng, uh, ng uh, gobyerno na 7.5 billion. Can you imagine that? We are we're living under broken... Uh, I mean, uh, we're not implementing laws in this country. And that's why I stayed away from this debate. Whether it's 12, 9, 15, 25, it doesn't matter if we are not serious about making sure that the kids have priority. And I'm not going to say I'm going to try and play my fiddle for those. Oh, sige na. Even my wife told me, wag naman nine. Even my own child, I, my, my daughter says, Papa, wag naman nine. They argue with me. There's an argument everywhere. But before they argue, understand the situation. The situation will not be solved unless ipupul court press natin si Ed Anyo, si General... Pero yung tatawagin para si Redur yung dalawa. Pwede naman tawagin yan, pero sinisiguro namin darating because ganun ka importante. And they are here because they are now expressing importance na itong hahanda, pupuntahan natin. I'm sorry. Mr. Chair. 
I'm sorry, I just have to uh, get this off my chest. Madali tayo magsabi, oh, the Zionist is this. But the brute reality I see, I've seen more. As Red Cross volunteer, I see more. All right? Yes. Mr. Chair, I'd just like briefly to thank the Chair for bringing up a point that we're trying to make here. Hindi talaga usapin na 9 ba o 12 ba? Kasi 9 at 12, at mamaya itatanong natin sa mga child psychologists din, walang pagkakaiba ang brain underdevelopment sa usapin ng criminal liability. So, babalik pa rin po ako dun sa full implementation ng juvenile justice law. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Eh, yun naman talaga dapat eh. Naman pinag-usapan natin sa araw pa eh. Hindi pa naman ako tumataya eh. Sa akin, it doesn't matter. Sa totoo lang, nine years old, wala naman na kulong dyan ah. Pero makin nakita na kulong. Ang ginagawa, in violation of law, and even in my city of Olongo po, nung dumating ako dyan, yung mga bata kinukulong, din hindi alam ng polis kung ano gagawin. Way back in the 80s, in the 85s, even now, yung warden hindi alam kung ano gagawin, dahil wala siyang budget para paglalagyan ng bata. That is the brute reality. You can tell me all the science. You know, I don't even want to say magyayabang ako. The first city that became child-friendly in the country was the city city of Olongopo by UNICEF. Please check your records. So do not, do not pontificate. I'm not, I'm saying, not, you know, some people pontificate on Facebook without understanding the problem. And I'm, we have to have, lalo ba sa'yo, okay. Pero sa akin, kayo nine years old, not a, no difference. 12 years old, no difference. 15 years old, no difference. What is it? Is kung ako ang sasabihin ko, para makakuha kong pera kay Presidente, gusto mo 12, bibigay ko siya 12. Hindi naman magagawa yun eh. Hindi naman magagawa yun eh. Para, o oh, magbigay ka lang ng pera ha. Make sure, para release mo, make sure tutusan mo sila in the annual, usunta mo lahat siya, para magawa natin. I'm being very transparent here. Because even if I say 15, when you check the grades, Eh, nakita nyo, 15 years old, Brad, nakikita mo, tumatalo doon sa kotse, nangahablot ng wal. Matanda, we are a country that respects our elders. Kinukuha ng kuyog ng mga bata, ibinababa sa kotse, gumugulong yung matanda, inaagaw yung bag. How can you reject that? I don't need a psychiatrist to tell me we have a problem. And the problem must be solved by all of us here for the first time talking about it, DSWD, DILG, police, everybody. Hindi natin masusolve yan. Pero at least, kundi natin lahat. Bigyan mo ng konting victory yung iba. Hindi naman makukulong yan eh. Wala pa akong nakita na nakulong. In fact, ulti mo yung mga polis. Walang kinukulong na mga... Wag na ako na inuhuli eh. Kaya ngayon, sabi nyo, nangako sila. Magkukulong na sila. Natanggal na yung isang uh, presinto. That's a, that's a step. But I'm not going to pat them in the back. They have to do it every day, regularly. So, my Mr. friends, Chief. if I may continue, I just have a few things to say, if, I, if you don't mind. If you want to ask, you can go ahead and ask, because I want to say, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, actually, ma ma gusto kong alamin pa yung, tano yung puntong uh, sinabi nyo a bit more. Uh, nandito po ba ang CHR? Yes. Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask, since the CHR has visitorial powers sa mga detention centers natin, ano po ba yung observation ninyo? Meron nga po bang mga CICL dahil sa gap sa implementation ng juvenile justice law na given those brute realities on the ground na sinasabi ni Chairman na sa ayaw at sa gusto ng ating mga PNP officers kung walang bahay pag-asa dyan nakukulong din talaga sila de actually kasama di ba Chair? Kasama ng mga adult offenders and uh, could you give us a, a, an idea kung ilang mga CICL ang aktual na nakukulong kasama ng adult offenders at ano yung mga living conditions nila uh, doon sa loob ng mga detention centers na iyon, Mr. Chair? Uh, good morning po. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, based on the 2018 data of the Commission on Human Rights, uh, in Caraga region, there is a reported three CICL uh, who were uh, apprehended and are uh, uh, detained in Butuan City Jail, and then three CICL in Surigao City Jail. In Region 9, uh, it has re uh, the CHR has a record that um, during their visits from May 21 to 24 and July 23 to 26, there are 65 CICL 
detained in various detention facilities and in Region 9. And then we have CICL in jails also in Baguio City, uh, jail, male dormitory. All right, Madam, can you just submit that? Because I'm yes. willing to stipulate before all the senators in the country that there are violations of this, either because of ignorance of the law or because there are no resources, there is no place where they can put them. I'm willing to stipulate that. Uh, yes. I yes, will forgive, Your but Honor. I will not forget. That is why we're doing this law. Yes, Your Honor. We have here a copy. Yes, ma'am. Please submit that. All right? Okay, thank you. So, so share together with the conditions in those jails if we may request the CHR. Yes, yes, Thank yes. you, Mr. Chair. We'll do that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not siding with it. I'm siding with the child. I, I'm going to practice what I preach. If we are going to say, nasa bata, ilang beses ilang beses na ba na ligyan? Nasa kabataan ng pag-asa ng bayan. Puro balon na yan. Hindi naman natin kinagawa ang katotohanan eh. Hindi naman natin pinagtatanggol talaga eh. Yes, Paolo, from Ateneo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, very short. Since we're talking about implementation of the law in the 12 years old, Mr. Uh, Chair, I just want to point out that... You're still advocating 12 years old. Please do not do that. I am not adv advocating yes. 12 years old. I am pointing But out your honor... Na na 12 years old eh. Sige na. I am pointing out your honor that in the amendment in uh, Republic Act 10... 630, Your Honor. In fact, it allows uh, the placing of 12 to 15 year olds in Bahay Pagasas for serious offenses and for repetition of offenses. Okay, Even not for serious. So, the point, Your Honor, for me is that if these children from 12 years old at present are properly put in a community intervention program and they fail, a repetition would put them in a bahay pag-asa that is already provided for by law and if it is just properly implemented your honor Paolo, then we would have this you're saying already what has been said you will hear no argument from me on what you said so our point your honor you is will that hear there is no, no argument from what i said i want to go on because i have another hearing thank you your honor thank you yes just very quickly uh, this was turned over to me i'm turning it over to the uh, committee Uh, signed petitions against the lowering age of the MACR, Cebu Province, Dinagat Island, Borongan, Ormoc, Iloilo City, and Province from the Children's Legal Bureau, CLB Networks. For the In record. the words of a famous senator, my fraternity brother, it is noted. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President, well, well, I thought you were in plenary. <laughs> Yes, uh, very Sir, very short lang yung sa... Dito, dito. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Very short lang yung sa uh, budget ng Bahay Pag-asa. Kasi po na-mention kanina na uh, i-co-consider sa bicameral. Gusto ko lang pong i-note ng uh, ating uh, ng, ng Senado na 5 million lang po ang pwedeng ibigay ng national government sa bawat Bahay Pag-asa. Yun po ang isang naging dahilan. Kaya uh, nahirapan po kami ng pag-push Nasa batas po siya sa RA 1060. So, dapat i-amend. Uh, uh, dapat i-amend. Depende amend. po sa inyo. Uh, sige, we will take note of uh, that. Thank sir, you, ang, Attorney Oko. Uh, sir, ang ano ko lang kasi, kung bibigyan po kami ngayon ng malaking pera sa budget namin hindi ngayon, hindi rin po namin magagastos. Ah, Oo, yan. Alam ko yan. That's why hindi ko naman sinasabi lahat doon sinasabi ko overnight mangyayari. Pero we can begin, right? We can amend that and we can start saying we will hire. You're not going to get 41,000 social welfare officers right away. We will ask the CHED to open a course on social welfare, uh, magkakatrabaho pa yung walang trabaho, right? Right? We will ask TESDA to start training uh, young people who cannot finish high school, which they are supposed to do anyway, para magkatrabaho sila, para meron sila mapupuntahan. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, just very Attorney quickly. Ibarra. Mr. Chairman, yes. just before. Doon lang sa 400 million, nag-asos ba lahat yun from 2013? Um, hindi sir, kasi masyadong malaki yung pera. Ang oh. ginawa po doon, staggered po yung, ay, malaki yung pera, mal, maraming limitasyon. So staggered din, ang ginawa po namin sa DBM, staggered po yung pagbigay ng pera. Yung una pong nabigay na 40 million ay nandoon na sa BPWH kasi nagko-construct po tayo ngayon ng walong bahay pag-asa. So in other words, 400 million in the last six, since 2013, in the last five years, hindi pa naubos. Hindi pa po sir, yung 40, 40 million pa lang po ang ano, ang for ang iba nagsa-start na po ng construction, ang iba hindi pa po. Isasubmit ko po sa inyo yung challenges 
kung gaano po kahirap ang dalawa ang sources natin pag nagpapakonstruct ng bahay pag-asa. Kasi po, ito ay source ng LGU na 10 million at saka 5 million naman sa national government at kailangan pa po natin itong ipadaan sa DPWH. Well, let's look at all the hedgerows. No? Unong hedgerow, yung spending capacity nga. Eh, no? uh, hindi, na, hindi na susunod. So, dapat at tatarihin ko dyan, eh. ilang ba talaga dapat ang staff ng bahay pag-asa? Hindi para sasagot yun. Um, sa isa pong, um, sa 50 residents po ng bahay pag-asa, kailangan may isang head social worker, mm. tatlong um, um, social workers na magbabantay ng mga kaso. Uh, we need uh, maintenance, we need security, and we also need uh, psychologists and nurses. We can submit po to you the pwede, positions. Hindi ba pwede yung maintenance yung mga bata? Ay, sorry po. Uh, maintenance po nung... Nung bata kami, kami nag, 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 uh, naglilinis. Merong bidel, tigalinis. Merong kami yung uh, tao doon, yung, nag, uh, yung bao na nag... Uh, ang tao doon? Nagbubunot kami, nagbubunot kami. At nakagal doon ang school. Pag nakita na si... Hindi na bagsatos yung papel at hindi ko pinulot. Nakagalitan ako. Kaya nung mayor ako, lahat pinupulot ko. That's a good, that's a good one. Ah, that's a good practice. Tapos hindi ba pwede? Meron tayong ginagawa sa Amerika yan. May boot camp. Maghahalo sila mag-drill. Magigising sila umaga. Lililisin yung, yung kanilang paligid at saka yung sa Japan. Bago pumasok sa eskwela, maglilinis muna lahat dyan. Tapos yung kanilang uh, higaan, nakaayos, may inspeksyon. Dapat may ganun. May programa ba kayong ganun? Wala. O, oh, tamo? Hindi Sir, haula yan. Uh, saan? Sumagot kayo? Kung di, hindi kayo makakasalita dito. Yeah, ano yan? Ano yan? Ano yan? Ano yan? Ano yan? Your Honor, meron po, ginagawa ho namin yan sa bahay pag-asa. It's part as duty of the child um, to do um, parang household chores. Or it's part of the life skills po eh. So we do that. Do you agree na dapat eh, sa mga eskwela, education, meron kayong Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, formally? May Den Mother? May Scout Master? Opo, makakatulong po yun, Your Honor. Ah? Well, alam mo, ha? Ah? Ha? Ah? Meron? Po, Your Honor? Oo. Oh. Kung meron po tayo ngayon sa mga paaralan oh. natin, meron pong mga paaralan na meron, pero hindi lahat? natin masyadong lahat. Lahat? May iral ba? Hindi po sa lahat. Nawala na yan eh. Ano, may camping, magluluto kami. Oh. Oh, tapos din kami corn beef lang noong araw, sa pork and beans, sa katalo na, o tuyo. Uh, uh, diba? Oh, Doon ba meron kayo recruit shoot? Para kung may hinimatay yung teacher, meron CPA na magagawa yung bata. You know, you go to Valenzuela, ang gagaling ng bata ron. Baliswala ka, no? O, yan. O, yan. Sabi mo sa kanila. Nambubuhan ng malalaki at inaayos nila. I was so proud. I had tears in my eyes when I brought him to the Department of Education. Pati si Sekretary, natuwa. Kaya pumirma siya eh. Yung kailangan gawin para may ginagawa. Ganado ang bata. Lalo nung pagka may pagkain, ah, may pupapasok yan. Lalo na kung may extracurricular activities na ganyan. Eh, wala nang programa ata eh. Kailangan may programa. Mr. Diba? Chair, yes, ma'am. Mr. Chair, since I noted that earlier you were going to recognize Mr. Guevara, ngayon ko lang po napansin, taga Paswi pa na sila, so yung association, uh, uh, yung Philippine Associ Paswi po, Philippine Association of Social Workers Inc. Oh yeah, of course. And uh, yeah. since na pag-usapan natin sila, sila yung isang critical na staff sa mga bahay pag-asa. Parang gusto ko lang idagdag sana yung tanong ko sa sa sabihin nila na one of the more compelling arguments against lowering of marker is that rehabilitation for C ICL has a higher success rate than for adult offenders simply because children respond better to external influence, including care. So could uh, Sir Guevara, uh, Mr. Chair, please comment on this using the Philippine context na mas, uh, mas nagre-respond pala ng positibo ang bata sa reformative uh, care kesa pa nga sa adult offenders. Um, we support that um, Senator Lisa, and we would also like to um, emphasize and reiterate na um, at present times, kanina pa po natin na recognize um, your honor na kulang po tayo sa social welfare officers. Um, some bahay pag-asa are not functional because we lack social workers. So it's high time that 
um, everyone knows that social work is actually a profession. Um, Your Honor, there is actually a baccalaureate degree leading to um, social work. And then you have to take the licensure examination as administered by the Philippine Regulations Commission to, attain, uh, to practice social work in the Philippines. As of this moment, katulad sinabi kanina ni Yusek Aimi, it's not uh, usapin ng salary lang. It's also usapin of supply because there are several social work schools who closes because of low population. So we would like to advocate um, for the present youth. Katulad ng sinasabi niyo, sir, na mag-aral sila ng social work. Hello. Hello. Um, it's a four-year degree program, sir. So, and then you have to take the licensure examination to practice professionally in the Philippines. You know, sometimes I find it so amazing that we make it so difficult for everybody to get a uh, license here in this country, especially for courses that kaya naman eh. You know, example, there mga tao na tatrabaho matagal porque walang college degree, hindi pwede maging civil service. There are so many imbalances in this country na dapat ayusin. Social welfare should be uh, something na ang, ang hindi ang importante dyan, malasakit, kusang loob, di ba? Um, social welfare kasi sir, malaking umbrella. The hmm. practice of social work primarily caters clients um, coming from individuals, groups, and communities. It's from a micro to macro perspective. So may mga interventions. So, micro to macro, yeah? Uh, may interventions po na pinag-aaralan din. Specifically, for example, um, for interventions, uh, specifically for CICLs, pinag-aaralan po yan, hindi, na, hindi po siya um, na gamot na para sa um, one size fits all. Or hindi siya para sa, may isang intervention program na para sa lahat ng cases na, na po ito. Matakot nang pumasok yung mga gusto mag-welfare office na sinabi mo, ako natakot na eh. <laughs> hindi naman po, Your Honor. <laughs> Ang ibig sabihin, talaga meron kanya-kanya skill set yan. Di ba? Na Professional pa, skill set, Your Honor. Di ba? Tama ba yun? Ate, tama ba yun? Rudes, ha? Okay, so, basically, that will open up a lot of jobs. Now, let me just run down some of the things that we were saying, no? And, matatakot ko yun, pag kinotinotal natin yan, we will need almost another half a billion. Food, two meals a day. Bawas mo na yun sa sa PPP. Guidance counselor, one for every two levels. Kung di natin kaya, one for every three levels. Kaya pabuti na kaysa sa one for every school. Ngayon, one for every school. Tama ba yun, ma'am? DSWD? Hello? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, all this is adjustable. Social worker for LGU, for every barangay. Ayan, dapat. Si condition sine qua non. Di ba? O, oh, so... 42,000 yan, boss. Ah, baka makuha pa ng hapon yan. Nangunguna ang mga hapon ng trabahador ngayon. Yan ang problema natin eh. Ah? Construction of additional 54 barangay, bah bahay pag-asa. 21 billion. Which is already promised anyway. Di ba, Tony Oko? 21 billion 600,000 para matapos 54 bahay pag-asa. Nakalaan na yan, di ba? Like a program, di ba? Every year, dapat? Ma'am? Journal expenses for every year. Uh -uh. Nine, uh, nine million. Uh, estimated ten million, actually. Ito, I'll tell you, I even put some luxuries here. Dapat ang bawat skwela, high school, may banda. <laughs> Para may diversion. Uh, hindi malunod sa masamang bisyo yan. Di ba? Eh, sa, sa ibang basa, may mga banda eh. Laking, ang laking unifying uh, instrument yan. Well, kung kaya, no? Yung sports and recreational center, ang dami mga flood control, ang dami mga river control, ang dami uh, kung ano ano ginagawa, ginagawa, pero nasasayang ng pera. Ito dapat makita ng bata, mahal sila ng gobyerno nila. Alright? Yung TESDA training center, oh yan, yan, yan nilagay pa nila yan, meron ng TESDA. Gusto ko pa nga magkaroon ng tablet for every student in school. Why not? Aim high. Because kung hindi ka mag aim high, hindi ka papansinin. So all this doesn't have to be that way. We can slowly do that. We can appoint more judges uh, doon sa uh, family courts. Makukompleto yan. But there's got to be 
somebody who is monitoring it, and it is my hope that, and my recommendation that there should be something in the cabinet, and if it's not spoken about in the cabinet, the Senate will call for oversight and call all of you together to see whether it's happening. Is that okay with you? Once every quarter, where are we? In so far as the youth is concerned. I will make these recommendations, folks. All right? Secretary Ajo? Layo ng tingin ah. Yes, Mr. Chair. Ikaw ang tawa si Oscar Romayel de Sayo. Okay sa inyo, Oscar, no? Attorney Oka, are you okay with this? Yes. Of course you're okay with this. Sige, friend. So, love to you, DSWD, everybody. We will work on this. We will lobby for this. Sabi natin lahat dyan. And we will start this year if we can, and next year. Kung ako sa inyo, gagawin na namin yung proposal sa inyo na doable and submit it early para malagay sa national expenditure, di ba? Sa NEP, di ba? Maaga pa. Di ba? Tarni ako ko. Ikaw, binigyan ka ng pera, hindi mo magastos. Oo nga, sir. Sobra. Okay. Amaya, kunin ng polis. Katabi mo, mga polis, kukunin yan. Ang bilin ng gamit. Alright, so I will not deal with the uh, age. Ako, I'll tell you where I stand. I stand, to me, age is a number. Can I, can I have your word from UNICEF? Thank you, sir. Uh, very happy to hear that we don't have to discuss the age. Because, in fact, our stand is that the present uh, juvenile justice uh, welfare law is a very solid law. Yes. The problem lies in the implementation. That's correct. And uh, there seems to be no accountability to, f to actually implement it for, for, from LGUs, from DSWD, et cetera, et cetera. So I very much appreciate the discussion we're having right now. How, is, how, how are we going to do this? Because changing the law or doing something different is not going to change anything unless we are, as a collective, ready to implement it. So yes. Would you say that there should be collective accountability? I think so. I would like to send a message to all the children <laughs> throughout the whole world that accountability starts with them. True, but they nobody probably is, find Nobody is too to young to have to know accountability. Of course not. Or too old. Of course not. But children are too young sometimes, especially below 15, to understand the consequences of their actions. Sometimes. Yes. But they can be taught, and they can be given and should be given a second chance in life. Oh, we do not want to create criminals. We want to save them from being criminals. The policy that I'd like to adopt is no child should be considered a criminal. Exactly. So therefore, we strongly but urge... But they have to be accountable. Of course. At and an the, early the, age. And the present law, in fact, does not say that children should get away with crimes got free. In but but the reality is that they do get away, don't they? Because the law is not being implemented. Because it is not implemented because many of us do not read the law, including the parents, including the barangay officials, including everybody. Yes. See, that's the problem. We do laws, and that's why every time we make a law, I put in a budget for publications, mm -hmm. yeah. for advocacy. Yeah, I've heard the joke laws are only suggestions. Sorry? I've heard the joke that laws in the Philippines are only suggestions. <laughs> Behave yourself. <laughs> because, no, but, but because these guys may suddenly, uh, may suddenly say we will implement it with you. <laughs> I'm not kid just kidding. But You're, that, that's, that, that, that is uh, reasonable. The law is not a suggestion. No. And uh, that's what we learned in law school. Do relax and lex. The classical as well as the positive school. Yeah. Everybody else? So uh, I'd like to thank everybody for attending this hearing. And uh, if you all agree on some of the suggestions, I think we have found common ground. Implementation, budgeting,
constant dialogue with each other, constant destruction, fixing the problem and not fixing the blame, trying to find a solution to all the problems. I thank the barangay officials particularly. Thank you. Uh, General Bayalde, Secretary, uh, it shows you care, the policemen care, the local government cares. I'd like to thank uh, all the psychiatrists. Uh, I will uh, expect your analysis of Senator Gordon if I'm still lucid. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, I call on the Secretary of Justice. Uh, thank you for coming, uh, George, but I do hope that uh, you will take a look at uh, what you heard here and pass it on to Maynard. He's a good friend. I think you know what to do. Also, Ms. Neri, I hope the Secretary of Social Services will try to appreciate this because we're trying to help you. And when you go back to the cabinet, try to report to the president what transpired here. Try in no uncertain terms, Secretary Anya, to say you're on the side. And you may say, I am for 12 years old, and let the heavens fall where they may. It is just a number as far as I'm concerned. It is something that uh, bragging yard writes. But to me, the proof of the pudding is in the implementation. I know for a fact, na kahit na 15, kahit na 18, hindi ma-implement siya. And this is something I'd like to tell you all. Today, my position is 12 years old. 2006, I was for 15 years old. I want to give something to the other side. But I will say today, it's 2000. Uh, it's uh, 2019, I'm for uh, 12 years old. Maybe in 2022, we could go to 15. And maybe in 2025, we can go to 18. It is really not a question of what the other governments say or do. It is a question of what the other governments say or do. Para sa bayan natin. Pero yun, tama lahat yan eh. 12, 15, ako, I'm being pragmatic. Let's meet halfway. Hindi naman talaga makukulo yan. Wala naman kukulo yan. Hindi naman mandatory yung sentence yan. Pero siyempre, dapat may accountability. Mr. Chair. Yes, I know you're gonna say. Yes, Mr. <laughs> Chair. Thank you. Um, as has been told us by a resource persons, there is accountability for the children, including civil liability for their parents, including pagbayad nila ng compensation sa mga victim survivors na mga krimen nila, including community uh, service. And uh, hindi lang po ito mathematical na meet each other at the average, add one number to the other number, divide by two, Pero kung maglalaan din tayo ng energy, Mr. Chair, under uh, the leadership of your committee and mine, to which these two bills are secondarily referred, siguro mas maganda ilaan natin to fully implementing at 15. At samahan natin sa halip na we go the other direction, the global trend na pataas. Even those countries, kahit sa Asia Pacific, na mababa, mababa ang MACR, tulad ng Australia, tulad ng iba pa, Ngayon, efforts are underway to raise their marker. At mayroong mga ka-level natin ngayon, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Timor-Leste, nandun din sa commendable age range ng UN of 14 to 16, tulad natin. So I would rather, and I am hoping, Mr. Chair, uh, with your leadership, and I will place mine beside you as the secondary committee to which these were referred, sa halip na ibaba sa ano ba, kahit pa 14, we maintain at 15, fully implement ang juvenile justice law with all the recommendations you, Mr. Chair, have already presented to us. And in those following years, salamat naman, itaas pa natin as the science will bear out as, as our child psychologists have told us. So that is my um, final uh, uh, ad, uh, appeal to the, to the committee chair. We hold the line at 15, fully implement juvenile justice law, at sa mga susunod na taon, pag-aralan itaas pa ito, as other countries in the world are also doing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Visa. Let me just say that uh, I am very happy with the way everyone has participated. Uh, we may not agree on the age, but uh, I think we agree on the fact that uh, the child must be the center of Philippine nation building. 
that is our sacred duty and responsibility. That's what I've tried to push here. Uh, I'd like also to say uh, we have beautiful laws, but they must be implemented in no uncertain terms. And there must be sanctions when they are not implemented. Uh, we have tried to show that there is a there must be a holistic approach uh, to address the problems of the young. Yung mga bata, dapat lahat tayo makakasama. Lahat may solusyon. At uh, ito ay dahil gusto natin sentro ang bata sa pagpapalawag. Uh, gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo na ang Pilipinas ay may malaking advantage ngayon. Tama ang age average ng Pilipinas. It is the sweet uh, sweet spot for development. Marahin pupunta rito, lalo na ako ang mga bata, lahat magagamit natin. Ayaw natin magamitin sa kasamaan, gusto natin makinabang ang bata sa may bibigay na mahusay na edukasyon, mahusay na suporta. At kung gagawin lahat siya, gagaling ang kabataan. I think you all know that. Lahat tayo alam niyan. But before you can do that, as I've always said, in any duty that I've done throughout my career uh, as a as a leader, uh, whether in school or whether in as a mayor or subic or tourism or the Red Cross or the Senate, there are three infrastructures that I always say. You have the legal infrastructure, the laws. They must be observed. Then you must support it with the physical infrastructure. You should have been attorney Oko, yung mga staff yung mga welfare officers kaya meron yan we can talk about many things that you can add but above all there must be the moral infrastructure and the moral position because you're all parents I'm sure the chief of police nobody is bad in this country as far as I'm concerned we all do our duties and we disagree sometimes on the way duties are done sometimes some people go overboard and they must be reminded about that pag nago go overboard but upon the other hand, it is important also to always remember that after this meeting, we remember that it is our sacred duty as parents and as citizens to protect our children, to protect the child. So who is to say? I, I'm not bothered at this 15. Whatever the senators say, I will, as a chairman, and I'm sure my uh, co-senators here will say, shall I 15 or 12? I think you're nothing because I'm not it. As far as I'm concerned, uh, that is where I'm not, I, I, I'm fundamentally sound on my arguments on this because to me, uh, what is important is we get the word without. We get the word without. We get our education going, we get our guidance counselors going, we get the post Malay, uh, Bata, how to save the children. But we've got to get it done. So I guess, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Lisa is never ending. Go ahead. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Chair. No, bilang yeah. ano yun, like parang secondary chair nyo dito sa bills na to. Kasi akala ko po kanina, it's not a question of the numbers. But since it still seems to be a question of the numbers, just one last question. Na hindi ko na sana itatanong, itanong ko na rin kay Dr. Lian. Sa usaping ito ng criminal responsibility, may diferensya ba talaga ang brain development ng 9-year-old at ang brain development ng 12-year-old to render either of them pwedeng patawa natin ng criminal responsibility? Senator Rina, there is no difference. 9, 12, or 15, no? all are still growing in brain development and still learning how to make decisions and control impulses and regulate emotions. Gusto ko po sana ibahin yung discernment no? sa ganitong klaseng brain development na sinasabi ko. Because even children who are very young, really, they do know what is right and wrong. You ask a four-year-old, alam na nila kung ano yung tama at mali. Pero iba yung kakayahan nila to, to behave in ways consistent with that knowledge. No? So uh, they still have difficulties uh, controlling their behaviors, uh, making decisions acting with forethought. No? So um, to me, you know, the age does matter because uh, if we lower macro to 12, no, this translates to thousands of children 
who are made vulnerable by all the implementation failures in our social welfare system. We have discussed earlier all the implementation failures okay, and, and the risks no, that children will actually be in detention centers, in places without rehabilitation programs. We're not just talking about bahay pag-asa as structures. We mean programs. And so many of these bahay pag-asa do not have formative programs for young children. So, kung babaan pa natin ang edad no, ng macker, I, I worry po, sir and, and ma'am, na, na we are really exposing thousands and thousands of more children to very vulnerable conditions that could really narrow their future life options. In this na sila ay nasa eskwelahan, sila ay natututo, sila ay nasa kalinga ng pamilya, uh, the risk is higher that they, that they will be repeating their offenses, as we have already discussed, because of poor implementation. So uh, the problems will not be solved by lowering MACR. Okay? The problems, as we have already discussed, will be solved by stronger implementation of the current law. So, so Ma'am Risa and Sir uh, Gordon, your honors, um, uh, I wish to also state that, that position uh, at this late hour of this session. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and I'll put a question on record. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lisa. I was already submitting it. Um, yes, Mr. Chair, I think that's, that's uh, point, not playing fair. Last. I mean, you ask them after we're uh, doing our summary, and I'm willing to bring it to the uh, session. Now, I, I don't want to be forced into a corner here, because I don't want to dispute what the child psychology say. I, I, I told you, even my wife says, 12 is sufficient. My children says, maybe they with the 15. But, you know, the reality is there are people in this government who may not be s as supportive if you put it at 15. Baka hindi tayo supportahan. Eh, tatarihin ko ngayon eh, tatarihin ko ngayon, Secretary of Justice, mayroon ka na bang alam na nakulong na 12 years old or 15 years old? Mayroon ka bang alam? Personally po, Mr. Senator, ako po wala po. Ano? Kayo, Judge, mayroon na ba kayong nakinulong na 12 years old or 15 years old? Dati akong family court judge, puro detention centers lang po. So you see, the, it's never ending eh. Mga may advocacy tayong lahat eh. Ang hinahabol ko lang, don't let this debate, you know, affect the noble objectives of getting everybody together, putting budgets, allowing more people to make it happen. Because every, you know, I'm a lawyer, I can get an expert to say otherwise. As the judges know, we can produce an expert to say this. And I respect uh, the expert, Dr. Alambay. I respect all the experts here. But if you keep doing that, eh, baka mawala ng gana yung mga tuturong dito na imbis na may magpay attention. I think we have, I think for all those listening, maraming nakinig at maraming nalaman kung ano ang problema. Pero kung ibabalik nyo dyan, eh, magsisigawan tayo 12, 15, ano ito? Parang sabong? So I'll just close my last intervention, Mr. Chair. Yeah. On the yeah. process, Mr. Chair, I submit, as you say, we will bring any unresolved issues uh, to the plenary interpellation. I have to make a recommendation. And and yes, Mr. I, Chair, if I'm I do rejected, understand then that's that. fine. Yes, so uh, we'll just uh, ask the other questions to the DepEd and the CWC on the implement, uh, implications of uh, criminalization of younger children on their future life options. No, no, but as I, I said, the, I... The last question I'd like to I make here is this. Chair. I you, personally Chair. do not know. Since 1932, when the revised penal code was made, nine years old, wala pa ako alam na nakulong. Yes. Um, sir, trabaho po kasi namin magbantay ng mga, uh, mga nasa jails. Trabaho ko rin yan, no, mayor ko. Meron po kaming nakukuha ng na mga batang nakukulong even before the 2006. Totoo yan, detention iba yung kulong. Kulong sir, sa kasi sa Ano ba yung detention? Di ba kulong yan? Kulungan sir. Yung sinasabi mo, di ba? Opo. Oh, sinabi na niyan. I am even willing to stipulate to the to, to everybody you heard me say that. Na I agree na talaga may nakukulong na bata. Bawal yun eh. Nasa batas yung bawal eh. Implementation ng pinag-uusapan. Pero sinintensyahan ng kursado, meron na ba? 
kulungka, nabi anjuska, dosi anjuska, kisi anjuska, kulungka, wala. Papanat bunga itu eh, sa akin itu deterrent eh. O sasabihin ng mga ngay, oy, huwag kang gagawa ng kalukuhan, makukulong ka dyan. Pero hindi naman makukulong yan eh. Pero dapat bantayan nila General Albayalde, ng local government, ng mga mayor, bawal ikulong yung bata sa deterrent. Ano ba sinabi ko? Nakinig ka ba? Sinabi ko, maglalagay tayo, kung hindi pa natin kaya, maglalagay tayo ng container van, air condition, ilagay mo yung mga bata ro, 150,000 na yan, 250,000 na gagawa mo. Pero hindi kinukulong yun. Ang sabi ko, may social welfare doon na magbabantay sa mga bata. Di ba sinabi nyo? So, huwag nyo nagbulihin ang debate. Kung makikipag-debate nyo, I can debate. I don't want to debate. I want to solve the problem. Alright? Okay, you want to win? You win. Sige, tingnan natin kung papayagan na magbibigay ng budget yung iba dyan. I hope you can read between the lines of what I'm saying. I know Risa can. But she has to maintain the posture. The belief. The belief. The principle. But ako, I know. Sa akin, hindi issue yan eh. Ang issue, yung bata, hindi natin inaalagaan. Gano ba kadiin pa yan? Eh, you know, for the first time, I hope you'll help me. I hope you'll help me. I hope you can get Senator President, President Soto, and everybody to fight for providing a real new contract with the people, the young people of this country. You know what I learned from Senator McCain? Give some to the other side. Make them feel they won a little. Don't think that you can win. Yung mga psychiatrists, yung tumatawa. Eh, kung sinabi mo, hindi pwede, basta, eh, baka matawag tayo lahat. Ibig na meron tayong mapupunta, hula. Eh, I can argue your point, eh. Ang gagaling na psychiatrist doon sa Denmark, sa Norway, sa Amerika, sa UK, kung napakagaling nga mga yun, eh. Hindi naman ako sumasayo sa tuktok ng UN, eh. UN nga, sabi, 12 years old is the ideal. Actually, I know that. So, wag tayo mag-argue dyan. Leave some for the rest of those who may not agree with us, ah, we want to help, at pagkatapos, o kuri namin lahat yung dapat ibigay sa bata. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Yes, Secretary. I hope this will not spark a debate. But for the DILT and the PNP, we base our stand on the statistics. Uh, when we tabulated the uh, top seven crimes involving uh, children, uh, nag-spike yung uh, pag-open ng crime at the age of 10 and up. So, uh, especially even murder, meron na siya, and robbery and rape. Yes, minors. Uh, committed at the age of 10 years old, 9 years old, but mostly 12 ang talagang nag-spike up. But it doesn't mean ikukulong naman natin sila eh. But rather putting more focus attention to these uh, children so that we can do this program together, the rehabilitation, the, the, the guidance, the counseling uh, in Bahay Pagasa uh, for these uh, uh, children. You, you know, sir, I did not ask you those questions and I knew the answer. I'm a lawyer. I ask questions that I know the answer. It's already for the record. But if I ask you that, yung kabila, ay, hindi, hindi, totoo yan, ito yan. Now, I will ask the judge, nag-rape yung bata, 10 years old, kukulong ba natin yan? Can you please answer? No, sir, but we're going to have, like, intervention programs for the child. Correct. 9 years old, 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old, they're not gonna be jailed. 15 years old, they're not gonna be jailed. Now, yung perception ng iba, natatakot na pagkaganya, it will open the floodgates of delinquency. You may be academically correct, you may be mentally correct, you're probably correct, but leave some assurance to those who want to support us. And then, manalo lahat. Okay? You know, I wish I could uh, say the things that I want to say. But that's the way it is.
Even in the budget, ganyan. Kaya, sabihin pa sa inyo mamaya yan, o binigyan namin ng 400 million yan, hindi naman magagastos, sasayang yan. I didn't want you here to say that. I would never ask that question, baka baka ibalik sa inyo. Dapat namin bibigay, gastos sa inyo muna. Kaya sinabot ko na kanina yan. Sabi ko, eh hindi, hindi pa talaga magagawa yan, pero kailangan nila yan. Kaya sabi ko, bago tayo mag-pat in the back, Tingnan muna natin magagawa yan para lalo tayo mabigay because ang philosophy ko sa buhay, kung magaling ka, tutulungan ka. Kung tamad ka, hindi ka tutulungan. Kaya so long po, bawal ang tamad. Lalong bawal ang tanga. So let's all aim high. I would like to just finish my statement here and with all due respect, and I respect Risa and I know she is very, very committed as we all are, there's no franchise on commitment. But the important thing is for the young kids to win. The important thing is that this nation be able to build a nation that will provide a future that the young people can win because we provided them with the opportunity. They must win the future. We cannot do it for them, but we can only create the atmosphere upon which these young people, sila mismo ang magpapanalo sa kinilang kinabukasan. Kaya kailangan alam nila kung ano masama, alam nila ang accountability nila, ha? at uh, para hindi sila gagamitin. Eh, yun lang nga nangyari eh. Ginamit nga ng mga loko. Isang tao lang na gumamit sa 15 anyos na bata na alam na hindi siya makukulong. Sabi nga sa akin ni Chief Justice, alam mo ba, Dick, meron mga bata, meron na silang birth certificate na pag hinuli, pinapakita yung birth certificate? I, I did not bring it up. I have to bring it up because... Gusto ko yung nakikinig, malaman. Dahil nirakit na yan eh. Nirakit na yan eh. It's a rocket. So, I'm not gonna touch that. All I will touch on, I hope, and that's why I thank all of you to have come here in Apple Hall, Apple Com, uh, wala lang dito, labor, education, kahit ako paano pumunta. At dito tayo lahat para makita natin how we're gonna solve the problem. We know what we do not want. I think we also know now what we need to do and what we want to do. And on that note, God bless the Philippines. Suffer the children to come unto me, said the Lord. Nabuhay kayo lahat, and uh, we will now conclude this hearing. Thank you all very much. Bawal lupo malakpak, pero yung may nawa. Pagtapos na session, pwede na kayong pumalakpak. Biro lang yan. <laughs>